Hey everyone, welcome to Edge of Legend here at Nat20 Productions. We're so happy to see you here today. I believe we're on the awesome episode 7? Seven? 7. So that's really yeah, cool. Seven. Yeah. So before we get kicking off, I see that we have an amazing raid from Angelis and all of our friends. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you like the show. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Love you. So uh, let's do a quick round of introductions, uh, starting with Mr. Casey. Who are you? What do you play? What are your awesome pronouns? I am Casey. I play Matthias. My pronouns are he, him. Yep. And I'm a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Straight to the point. Uh, Sydney, please tell us all those awesome things. Hi. Uh, my name is Sydney. I play Alona, the half elf cloistered cleric, and I go by she, her, and I'm a cloistered cleric. <laughs> all right. Ian, give us those deets. My name is Ian. I play Woodwar and roll for Mush, and uh, we all go by he, him, they, or them. All right. And Mr. Kapow. Hello, I am Michael Powell, and I play the fabulous Rufa. Uh, my pl pronouns are he, him, they, and them, and I play the investigator. Very nice. Kylie, bring us home. What you got? Hi, I'm Kylie. I play Shionabis, the elven ranger. Uh, we go by she, her, and I think I think that's all the questions. I can't remember. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Hey, PJ, you're up. Oh, oh man. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm on the spot. Uh, my name is PJ. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be the GM of this homebrew campaign set with the rules of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'll be playing everyone else in between. And let's get started. So, last time at The Legend Episode 6, we had a very interesting day where uh, this amazing costume was designed for one of our players who uh, is doing an awesome job somewhere else. She won't be joining us for this evening, but we will get Amy back next week. Um, but she has this awesome outfit that was made for her by Rufa. She, uh, in this gigantic sort of super orc, uh, decided to run into this now smaller camp of orcs and tell them that the, their camp has been destroyed. So these orcs have been attacking these human villages just over the way, and chaos ensued, things blew up, a viking was saved, and now, top of episode 7, one army has been moved off uh, by uh, Morel, Zashmaru, Ulfgaard Company, and the Brotherhood of Dogs Mercenary Company. An ambush has been placed while the heroes are now finally making their final trek over to the quarry with the orcs who are now working with goblins and hobgoblins seem to have some sort of headquarters stationed therein. So, I guess the question is, tell us the tale. How do we start? Who goes first? Well, usually this is the part where Amy says something creepy playing Eloise. We're going to have to shoot past that part. Uh, mm -hmm. So the last thing, the... We were moving towards the headquarters. Zoshmaru just showed back up, right? Mm -hmm. With the yeah. dogs and the Ulfgaard company in tow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And we made a really, really good deal. Yes. <laughs> Such a good yes, deal. Exactly. Such a good lawyer. Lawyer. Um Such an amazing <laughs> lawyer moment, my God. Kylie, not to throw you under the bus, but uh, the Ulfgaard company's here and they seem to be listening to you. <laughs> I got uh, the dogs, don't, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about yeah. it. It's all Just because you have booze, that's not fair. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Your friends should have come in common. Mm -hmm. um, so if we have the maps, we have multiple well, multiple, multiple maps, maps and copies. Maps. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I think our plan at this point, since we have everybody with us, since I showed up in just a nick of, nick of time, is to try to go after the headquarters? Question that mark? That is the that is the plan. We were going to have um, Eloise go in with Leon Tari and get information on the guy who creates the big Franken orcs. Um, and we were like we were like all like gonna hunch over as like back up in case things go really bad really quick. And we all made really good bombs. <laughs> could could we then do a little bit of a Trojan horse? Which we would can call uh, what was uh, the reverse Voss, where we get a big backpack that we all fit in to put onto the orc. 
wake the you papoose? Yeah, <laughs> yes. the papoose? Walks, walks into camp with said backpack. We all jump out. So for those of you that uh, didn't, the last episode, this giant half-elf viking was dying, and the only thing that could save him was being completely, like, drenched in the sea. So instead, they made this papoose for this giant super orc to carry a full-grown man, like a wee little baby, to a river nearby, where he is now currently soaked. <laughs> so that's the papoose, the papoose of elven holding. Uh, could, so that yeah, be a magic item? could that be a magic item? <laughs> no, the papoose of elven holding. Elven papoose of holding? Guys, we're starting off great. Yeah. yeah. No. So, I've given my bad idea. Now we're gonna hear everybody uh, else's. I love that we idea. Have... <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. We have morale, the dogs, and the oof guard all still kind of waiting for that yeah, ambush, there's... right? So they're gonna lie. We're supposed to do the ambushes and the pitfalls mm -hmm. and uh, start That's some traps. Okay. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, just for a quick reminder, there's the headquarters, and then uh, shortly uh, away from there, like a nice little quick run away, is the ambush and stuff that I put on my very official map here. Uh, that Morel is spearheading alongside Zashmaru, Brotherhood of the Dogs, and Ulfgaard Company. So they are uh, taking care of that as you guys are speaking. Now, the question is, how are you going to invade the quarry where the headquarters of the orcs and goblins and hobgoblins is? I like the idea of hiding in a backpack, but I don't know if we're all gonna fit yeah. on Leontari's back. <laughs> and also can't- I don't- like, you know he's strong, but can he lift like what? One, two, three, four, five, like five other people strong. To be fair, Woodward's only half a person tall. Okay, then four and, and a half people strong. <laughs> And playing the math game, consider this. For the past two days, Leontari was chucking full-size trees over 50 miles. <laughs> yeah. Like, wasn't he chucking trees, though? Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, well, uh, then we can get... Should we also take a rest, too? Oh, I think we, I thought this I think we did that, right? Oh, we did? Okay. We're all waking mm -hmm. up that morning. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not fatigued anymore, right? If you took a full <laughs> night's rest, then yes, you are no longer fatigued. Did we take a full night rest? Did you yeah, take a did. full night rest? Okay. Did we yeah. We did. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 rest. Kylie, don't stack this against us. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Casey? Before we charged all of our spells. Well, that was specified. It was find out next time. So technically, <laughs> oh, no. Yet, but we could it do can that. be. All right. Well, you know what? This is a group telling story, so if you guys are saying you rest for the day, then we start bright and early at the at the crest of the golden sun at dawn. So I, you guys, I would like the rest, so I'm not fatigued anymore. <laughs> Honestly, this is a good thing too because it's going to give Morel, the dogs, Zashmaru, and Ulfgard Company plenty of time to set this ambush up yeah. proper. Yeah. All right. So, so rest, yes. rising. Yes. With the rising mm -hmm. of the sun and the fresh laden dew on the grass, the steam of the of the uh, uh, evaporation and condescension con condescension, that's different condensation <laughs> all Word happening at once yeah, hey, you know what? those I... traps could have been made better <laughs> yes <laughs> those people are just more like morning mists just rising up going you know, if you were a real man you wouldn't need a trap <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, anyway so that being stated you know, that, that time in the dawn before the sun is fully risen, you are up you can only imagine Morel is off somewhere doing his morning prayer facing the rising sun, and Zashmaru is taking what little water he has, wiping it on his pits, and then drinking the rest from there. Lyrian is still, to your knowledge, in a river somewhere. Uh, in a ri <laughs> down by the river! <laughs> in a papoose! <laughs> so, you, the plan, if I, if I remember correctly, from what you said... <laughs> <laughs> Sydney, great belt work. Uh, so you guys That's are going to lose our inspiration point. Uh, don't forget those hero points. Everyone gets one to yep. start with. So you guys are going on the back of this gigantic super orc, correct? Mm. Um, yes, we okay. are. I think We're it's going e to it's, so it's either that or we put Woodward in the costume that was made for Eloise. Oh yeah, they're they're about the same size, huh? He can't speak any goblin or orc so i don't know if infiltration will really happen as much as um yeah it's so i'm wondering if we try to be sneaky 
Or you know what? Good Maybe question. We... Um, I'm actually kind of curious. So, Amy's character is she now still with us, or is she with the I... dogs and? So my my rule of thumb, whenever someone is, it's just like when we're at the table and someone's not here, they're there. They're absolutely there. They're not missing a beat. I guess the only tragedy is they can't really join, like you know, do anything. But they haven't missed anything. They okay. they're there with you. Is, I was gonna say, would it be possible, or if she's in the backpack with us, she could use her mind powers to translate for uh, Woodward. Would that be possible? Or we could just or follow. Closely behind, and she can use Leon Tari as a trusted ski. I think that yeah. would be. I think that works well too. I'm I'm wondering if at this point, if we can't send in our uh, friend who may look like a goblin, it may be time for our rogue to do some sleuthing. Uh, now I say Trojan horse after we actually, you know, get some evidence. We're not just running in there and jumping off of Leon Tari's back and just havoc and. Sleuth. It's like a Trojan horse, except the Greeks. There's only one Greek, and it's standing on top of the horse. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Trojan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> and there's another like couple of Greeks shot. scattered behind them. That's yeah, it's, a trench coat uh, with a bunch of people in it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> on that's top of their shoulders. Been, that's exactly what it is. That's a Trojan creep. It's not really a flasher. People <laughs> in a trench coat. Uh, anyway, so uh, so just for clarification here, making sure we have the right play moving forward, we're sending a Leontari with Eloise in the goblin disguise, kind of riding this guy like Master Blaster. Uh, I think I like should... Olafine just up on, up on the top, just barking goblin orders. Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's make that the uh, effectively the first wave of this entrance into the quarry. Do you have any other plans you want to do in tandem, separate? What's your, what's your thought on that? Um, question, are we still in the backpack or now are we following behind what's the situation on us it sounds like right now you are not currently in the larry and vos papusa situation okay. you are now uh in a separate scenario you okay. can either follow with leontari the super orc or you can get your distance you could split the party you could do whatever you want to do oh I think we follow with what separate. Amy originally kind of set up because I feel yeah, like that's probably our best like plan of attack. The people staggered. Uh, I was close, closest to uh, Leontari and Eloise, and then we were kind of like scattered, almost two by two, like behind. <laughs> Are we still little, having yeah. um, Eloise mo- like mind power message us whatever's going on that she's hearing? I mean, she still asks, well, no, she doesn't have to have line of sight to talk to you, but you have to have line yeah. of sight to respond. Yeah. So we know what's going on? Are we still doing that? Uh, yeah, we can definitely do that. Great. Okay. okay. All right, uh, Casey, what, what was the thing you were saying uh, before Michael? Uh, I don't know. We're just, like, we're just staggered a little bit, like, having some space between us. Uh, yeah. Almost, like, effectively our own mini waves. But close, close enough to where we can get to each other very quickly. Okay. Are we staggered like this or staggered like, uh, uh, uh? I, I think, think he, behind, like, like a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So like this. Line. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like a filing cabinet. Okay. Is it- <laughs> the files are dead. <laughs> <laughs> So just for yeah. logistics, how far apart would you say you guys are sta- uh, staggered? 10, 15, 20 feet? I'd say 15 or 20. Yeah, 15. let's do that. Either way, I mean, we could even go as far out as, well, some of us, uh, 30 feet, because we're only going to end up using, for like action economy, one move to get in, and then yeah. we could start our... That was... That was, that was okay. Idea. So yeah, 30 except feet. Who's the slowest? Except Woodward. So He's thinking, 25. If anything happens. Oh. Woodward okay. is 25 feet away. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Even if you're on someone's shoulders? Well, I don't know who's going to carry me. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> Plus, you're thinking about... Yeah, mush. mush! Ride mush into battle! Yeah, mush. 
like a skateboard. Just if you don't think I already have, I already have a, a few feet set aside to get that guy to be rideable. Uh, just wait. <laughs> I, I have this mental image of like that awful like 90s be extreme kind of campaign and it's just Woodward with like sunglasses like he's surfing on hey, mush Dan. and he's just Dan. saying like oh drink God. alcohol <laughs> you know and it's just anyway moving right along I'm just, I'm just waiting for the day where we hear mush mush <laughs> yeah oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Mush, mush. Yes. Yeah. mush so yeah then you should probably be Behind me, since you're, you can't move this far. It's only five feet, but you know. Yeah, no, it sounds great. Uh, but okay. the thing is that I got range with my spells. That's true. That is. Right. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I it's don't. Like make up for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm. In, uh, that's why I'm in front because I don't have range. So since we're speaking about front and back and side to side, let's talk about uh, marching order. We have Matheus at the front, of course, behind the uh, the Master Blaster. Uh, so it sounds like Woodward is behind Matheus by about 25, 30 feet? Yes. Okay. We'll see. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, what do you can keep up with? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and who's behind Woodward? Actually, can I be up there with Woodward with my sling? I think we're. Well, let me ask you, Woodward. Do you want to have you guys kind of side by side, or do you want to keep um, the? Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't see a problem with that. Um, I think there's a few of us that are going to be good at range, and a few of us that are going to be good at close. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the fact that there may be, if say, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Woodward and Matthias have to run in and do something. Uh, we already have a sling in our back. And then Shodabis and everybody else. So Perfect. Right. All right. So we have Matheus leading the charge. We have Woodward and Roof a side by side, about 25, 30 feet behind Matheus. Who wants to go behind Woodward? Um, since we were going to do two at a time, I think it's just Shodabis and I. Side by side? Yep. Okay. I got my healing hands. You need to be protected. I feel like your healing hands need to be protected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's just let's just make the cinnamon bun of the cleric just like, huh? <laughs> Here we are. I feel, like, I feel like we're gonna have to make our cleric do suicides of just. <laughs> 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 oh man! Oh, right. Good thing. <laughs> good thing. Well, no you can, one works you out. You can heal too, right? Would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I totally can. So we're we're good. But, I yeah. still like the idea. Of it, I'm definitely not as good at it, but just, yeah. All right, so really fast, I want everyone to make for me a survival check as you are using your map to get to the headquarters at the quarry that feeds the economy of the little town of Cobbledale. Oh, shoot! Guys! Oh, no. What? I don't and like that, Sydney. We have to be careful with our bombs! <laughs> 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 oh! When has a bomb ever exploded on us? Name one time. I can name at least three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Every episode do. so far. What if we roll in? Well, uh, we have two nat twenty bombs. Uh, mm -hmm. What if we roll in that? We have to roll on bomb to see if we don't destroy the quarry um, and just the people in it. Um, Depends on who's in the quarry at the time. I give you my word. I will not roll for those bombs. <laughs> 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 not gonna do it. <laughs> but that being said, I have a 16 survival. Okay, 16 survival from Casey. What do you got, Mr. Michael Powell? 17. 17. What do you got, Sydney? Got a 12. 12? All right. What do you got, Ian? 22. Was that, I'm sorry, was that a 22? 22, yeah. Damn. Hey. Wow. Kylie, what you got? 14. Okay. Thankfully, there was uh, more successes than failures as you're walking to the quarry. You're able to kind of check your map when someone gets a little uh, confused or, or misguided. You're able to use the map and each other to find your way there. Uh, and you very quickly see uh, this kind of little off-beaten path that kind of cycles down and around this hill. And from where you're standing, you can see it enter what looks like a cave entrance that's reinforced with wood bracing. Um, just a casual glare from where you are as the grass fades to kind of a dirt road. You see tipped over on the side a mine cart. And judging by the rust that is growing on the bottom side of it, 
as in the one that's on the ground. It's been here for a little while. So we believe that the enemy is at inside of this hill, inside mm -hmm. of this mine, correct? That is correct. What is stopping us from casting mending on the cart, loading all of our bombs in it, and just letting it go into the mine? You don't know. There's a lot of unknowns. The question is, what is stopping you? Uh, Michael, what's up? Um, could I kind of scope out around the mine cart? I want to see if it's like been disturbed recently or anything. Uh, I'll tell you right now, you can tell from the rust growing on the bottom and the impression in the ground that it has not moved at all okay. in a long time. So yeah, the question is up to you. Do you want to load this cart, this minecart up full of my, uh, bombs, throw it in and see what happens? Is there uh, a concern about idea? that? Yeah. I love yes. the idea, don't get me wrong. I love how chaotic it is. But because it's so rusty, I'm worried that when we push it down, it's going to be real bumpy. Oh, It's, it's going to go off way before... What? Way before it even gets to where we want it. What is the yeah. limitation of mending? Is there like a time limit or? Uh, so no, actually, it, if the if the thing is broken, um, it returns to a fixed condition. It loses its broken condition, and it gets half of its HP back. Uh, if I cast it on something that isn't broken, I roll a I believe it's D four uh, to give it back a certain number of HP. How how like level is the ground and stuff around this area, or is it like bumpy or anything like that? I mean, it's your average forest hillside. Um, like I said, you had to kind of go down a little bit of a, a dirt road. Um, you see that you're on these kind of rolling hills, uh, lots of grass, trees, and this big cave. Uh, what? I just had an idea. I love it. Uh, Give me that idea. What if just I just pictured in my head in like dire situation, we could have our orc trebuchet just toss toss a cart full of bombs. Like a grenade. <laughs> yeah. Like once like once Eloise goes into the camp and like finds out information and just, then it comes back out. Yeah, we need the information. Oh, oh hey. I also we need the information actually, first. <laughs> we could we could actually run a pretty good a pretty good thing here um if we load so the the track for this cart goes outside of this mine correct mm -hmm. enough that you can so, deposit a cart yeah so we put it up fill it full of rocks maybe not even the bombs yet we can save those for like just in case uh we can get eloise to come back out with uh our giant orcish friend um and then anything that's pursuing them we then let the cart go full of rocks down guys, that way and knock as many of them out as possible. Guys, I just had a really good idea too. But I need to know s certain things. Yeah. <laughs> Is, okay, um, the encampment. It's on the bottom of the curry, quarry, right? Uh, it does appear that the headquarters is within the quarry. Okay. That's what the map says. On the top of the quarry, um, how stable is all the dirt and the land and everything? You don't know. You can tell, though, that Cobbledale has mined this place, this quarry, for its stone for a long time. Because, guys, I'm thinking, what if we set the bomb as charges along the edge of the quarry and then set the bombs off to create kind of an avalanche? I think and just, like, actually, bury everything. That, that would definitely give... Eloise, the time to get out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if she's on her way out and things get a little hairy, we could set those off. Bigger problem they wouldn't pay attention to. Yeah. So, dirt avalanche. Yeah. All right. So I heard, all. I heard two ideas here. Uh, so how about you guys put it to a vote and then decide an action? We have the bury them in the avalanche with the bombs placed, and then we have uh, Ian. Remind me again your plan. So I think they actually could work both really well in tandem. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's actually, I, I'm not entirely sure we have to pick one at this moment. Uh, we give Eloise the time that she needs to get in there and get out with any information she can. Mm -hmm. As soon as she's out, if she's being pursued, we set off the bombs at the top of the camp, hopefully do as much damage before we can call the dogs and Ulfgaard company in. And if she heads back out the mine shaft that we are looking down now, we can, as soon as she's cleared out of the way, we can send the cart down 
full of rocks for anybody pursuing her to hit them and she can make her way out to then set up an ambush on this side of the line. Okay. Yes. So, yes, uh, Sydney. No, that sounds like an amazing, awesome, cool plan. That sounds good. Question. Matheus is following behind her, right? Yes. Okay. So we also have to, in our contingency plan, we also have to wait for Matheus to get out. That's the only other thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Like, anybody, yeah. any, 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> Be polite to your rogues. Let them yeah. live. Anybody who would be inside would get out of the way, and then we can let the set, let said cart go. Um, it okay. may even be worthwhile for okay. Shonobus and Rufa set the bombs off because Shonobus also has the possibility of shooting down. Mm -hmm. uh, Matheus heads in with Eloise. And Ilona and Woodward stay at the top with the cart. So if Matheus and Eloise come out hurt, they can be immediately healed before the whole thing goes down. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like it. Are like you it. suggesting uh, we have people on the side to like set those charges? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be me and Chumbus, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I figured both of them. Like, we, we have two people who know their way around them, have uh, better stealth checks than either me or Ilona. <laughs> Go set the charges in general. And then uh, we also have two people who are ranged fighters, so... Or can be ranged fighters. Yeah, someone... We can have, like, Overwatch of showing us, like, make a move, ranger games. Exactly. Mm, yeah. Totally. Uh -huh. Nice. All right, so I think we have the plan, and let me just repeat for clarification here. So we have Chionibus doing Overwatch, uh, keeping her eye peeled on the entrance to... Uh, an exit, I guess, from the quarry. Uh, there'll be some prep time where you are all setting up the bombs to collapse the, uh, the basically the exit and entrance to the quarry. Uh, the two healers are going to be hiding by the cart so that they can make sure that there's any first aid applied if necessary. And our boy, Matheus Frygost, is going to be doing a stealth mission a la Metal Gear Solid. Um, All right. Don't forget your box. Oh yeah. Uh, do you have any range uh, items, Rufa? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's my sling. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, before we send in Eloise and Matthias, mm -hmm. could um, uh, Ilona and Woodward cast? Well, I think the spell is uh, bless or eight or something. Ooh, I don't know if I have that. Uh, or it's, it's, prep, it basically gives but... them plus one to skills. Guidance. Oh, I guidance, sure do have yeah. guidance. And yeah, yeah. Remember, this is a cantrip. Yep. Yeah, have them cast on uh, on Eloise and Matthias when they go down. And when me and Chonobus are up there, before we set up the charges and stuff, cast mm -hmm. that on us okay. as well. <laughs> I think the best thing for us to do at this point is everybody else cycle past Elona and Woodward where we pass out high fives. And yeah. give guys yeah. 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 high fives. Guidance, high fives. Guidance. Go, 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 go. Good go. job, good job, good job. All right, so I you guys that. agree or you're, you're giving... <laughs> It's so cute. So you guys are giving guidance to everyone in the most like positive team exercise ever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so everyone's got plus hey, one. High five. Yeah. Trying to get some more guidance. <laughs> hey, Kaylee, Kaylee, you're Hanzo and I'm Junk Rat. Oh my uh, god. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. <laughs> Wow. Incredible. Well, shoot. Let's start this shit, dig. All right. Let's dance this jig, shall we? Um, all right. So. Uh, what I'm going to need then, since we're talking about placing bombs and rolling for it, I need you guys to roll to place your bombs. Uh, oh, for, man. So there's no catastrophic blowback. What I need nope. from you guys is a DC 15 athletics or acrobatics check. Elo, oh, I think we're good. Oh, the we athletics have no bombs. Or, wait, wait, uh, no, everyone has a bomb. Oh, you mean just the people that are placing the bombs, not the people. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you say? Athletics or what? Athletics or acrobatics? DC 15. Don't forget and your you hero points. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where is my... It's the one dice I don't have out. Hero point. <laughs> you see 15, right? Yes, sir. I promise you that is something I will never forget. <laughs> yeah. <really> need it. <laughs> oh, man. Got a 16. You're safe and set. <laughs> Kylie, what's the damage? Uh... Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no, hero point. Hero point. Hero point. Hero point. Hero point. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. Hold on. It's about to turn into that Helm's Deep scene where 
the dude runs in with the bomb and just blows up, except it's our... Except this time, it's Legolas instead of an orc. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, uh, it's it, 10. Is it, is it athletics Even with the hero point? Is this acrobatics? A, oh. Ooh. Okay. Can, can, can I give her too. aid? I was like, no. Oh. No, because you're doing it, man. You can't give her aid. No. So you are able to set up your your bombs very nice and precarious, and you can actually feel them getting warm in your touch as the liquid is start to uh, get a little angry. Um, Chonabus, you are trying to place one of these bombs. However, you have spent over a thousand years of your life perfecting the way of the bow, the huntress. Bombs are a very new thing to you. I need a... Because this is what I rolled. So the bomb that you're putting up, I need a reflex save, and it's going to be high, and I'm very sorry, but I need okay. you to beat a DC 20 reflex save. See, this was my fault, guys. I put Shonabis near a ledge. <laughs> it was established in the first episode. She shouldn't go near those. <laughs> she shouldn't something I overlooked. Ledges. It's been a few episodes. I'm so sorry. But rangers need height, so they can <laughs> aim down. You said a reflex? Yes, ma'am. That's a 21. Oh, oh, oh. yes. <sighs> so, I will see you're safe, but for the sake of narrative and for funsies, uh, I want you, you can choose between three things. Oh, God. Jump, drop, or throw. Throw. Okay. One second. I'm going to roll a D8. Maybe you guys can get information in chaos, too. In the midst of chaos. <laughs> I mean, our person that is our line of communication, like, swims in chaos. So Yeah, that's true. Sure she'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> so, as nice you're... Swims. Nice pun. <laughs> so, as you are about to place this down, you can tell that, again, the... The, the care needed for such volatile chemical is, is eluding you because, again, this technology is very new. This, I'm sorry, alchemy is very new. As you sort of place it down, it starts to violently shake in your hands and you're getting that hot potato bad vibe. Um, <laughs> Writing that one down. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, uh oh, this meatball is too spicy, and you just eat it, just with your all of your instincts. You have to get rid of this thing, so you throw it to your right, and this thing goes wide, off down the hillside, and into a deep, deep cavernous valley below. And you hear this as the explosion is thankfully safely down in this empty huge uh, uh like kind of cliffside but now there's a very loud reverberation that is echoing all throughout um of a took. yeah and you immediately start hearing this kind of odd muffled cacophony of sounds coming from the quarry um that being said you didn't die and you only lost one bomb that being said uh casey let's roll that sales check shall we Sure. With a plus one. Don't forget that plus one. I feel like uh, we should have Leontari stomp extra hard. So, like, oh, that was just our giant orc coming into town. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> we used to say Leontari had a bean for yeah. lunch. <laughs> what was that, Casey? 21. 21? Excellent. Okay. Yes. Make a note of that stealth check. Because the uh, guidance I can that's a choice right yeah uh yes cool and it works on a bunch of different stuff there's skill checks uh i gotta look it up again yeah, i was making sure in, in this that it still works with, like, when I yeah you it. totally get to you yes. totally get to choose mm -hmm. all right so you sneak in um as you as you do that you and eloise kind of like shoot those gla uh, glances and you you talk in the the thoughts between thoughts and then she whispers in Leontari's head, and he kind of looks confused, and he goes, Leontari designation requires target. Accept the mission to stomp. And he just starts awkwardly stomping, looking very perplexed by this operation. And when he is done stomping, and he goes, Leontari has uh, finished operation. Great success. Stomping was head. 
There is a sloppy nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Leontari proceeds to walk in again with Eloise sitting on his shoulder, uh, much like a little plushie that she has on hers, uh, and you off in the distance. Now, this is going to be interesting because there is a whole infrastructure here. Uh, it's not too complicated, but there is things around. When you first enter the quarry, Casey, you notice there seems to be two branching hallways from the main uh, passageway. Uh, you can see that there are two different tracks, one going in and obviously one going out, or however else you wish to decide them, but they do create two lanes of traffic. Uh, this place looks very quiet, very still, aside from the, now when you get inside the quarry, that cacophony you heard before is now this horrible echoing noise coming from the far end of the quarry uh, headquarters area. So, to surmise this, three places you can go to your immediate left your eventual right straight ahead by a large mile oh i think straight ahead okay it's probably my Walk guess is whatever this is is fortified in the dead center or at least fairly close to the center okay so you are stepping off to the dead center. Um, just for giggles, give me two perception checks as you pass by these two rooms. Okay. First one is a 25. Uh, nice. second one is going to be 25. <laughs> nice. I rolled the same thing twice. <laughs> Love it. So as you pass... The room to your left, you can kind of see down the corridors on the little hallways, and you see what looks like uh, where they would keep the carts. However, a ton of them are spewed over on the side, flipped entirely on their top with their wheels up. It just almost looks like a cart graveyard as opposed to a uh, holding cell for them. You can also see that hiding inside the carts or constantly lifting them in unison to get out from underneath them is all of the goblins that work there. Uh, it's become kind of a goblin housing area. Uh, three goblins are currently in a nasty, nasty fight. Um, but it's in goblin, and it sounds like they're fighting over a cracker. It's really hard to make sense out of any of it. Um, Eloise kind of laughs, uh, <laughs> hearing, hearing them fight. And she goes, goblins are stupid. Uh, so they're fighting over something. Who knows what? As you pass the other room on your right, you can hear the dull uh, movement of very, very heavy machinery, very simple but heavy machinery, and you can see what looks like the old sifting and reclamation center. So a lot of the dirt would get like hit by water and process to try and find chunks of stone, possibly rare stone, but this is the place where everything they took from the quarry would make sure it was nice and uh, accessible once they left. And you can see as you pass by a ton of these uh, very efficient sleeping bags placed around about the size that would that would be really good for an orc. And you can assume you can assume that this is now the orc barrack of this place, this operation. Continuing forward, as you enter now, the the hallway just gets wider, massively wider, and it looks like this is kind of that main transportation center. This is where a lot of the carts would have to pass by, make room for each other. Maybe a lot of the workers would be centered here at the meat of the quarry. And as you do, you see two things of interest in this general area. To your right, what would be a place where they might have carts being held on to weights until the line gets opened up to come back out. Now, some of that mining uh, rail has been pulled out of the ground and there's a massive table. Uh, easily three tables long and on top of the table is what looks like uh, a bunch of papers and something leathery and massive probably a map on hide or canvas from your standing that's kind of what it looks like now to your left you see what probably would be the tool area where they would put their equipment for storage or maybe even personal effects a lot of those, except for the, the hooks, have been torn off the wall, destroyed and dismantled. And you see weapons of different kinds being kept there. And hanging on a few of the, the hooks, you see this giant map similar to the one that you would imagine to be on the war table. 
And last but not least, a surprisingly ornate wooden and, and metal reinforced door with a doorknob and a kind of little window to your left and the left of the now weapon racks. Uh, so I'm thinking like the, I'm thinking it might be nice to have that smaller map. Uh, I'm not going to go for like the big one, like the, the really big one, but the one that was on, so there was some one on the table. Uh, might try to get that, but it seems this, I don't know, telepathically to, to Eloise. Oh, uh, I think that. Whoever is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't give me my baby Yoda. You know I love my baby Yoda. Uh, uh, the, 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 the door is of importance, uh, and there seems to be sort of a, a pecking order to things, surprisingly. So, mm -hmm. okay, so you go to the giant table to the right with the smaller of the two maps. Yeah, I'd like to try to try to sneak one of those maps for myself sure you see on this table a bunch of letters and papers scattered all over and you see this giant map on this map you see a bunch of different symbols legends and colors um all of it's in orcish um but what you see marked off circled are different major cities throughout the world you see adelphon with a big red circle and movement directions and charts. You see places below Adelphon with other marks. You see places above towards the White Step tribe area, and you see a bunch of different marks there and question marks. You see places across the Grand Divide in the Shin and Oriasi world. You see New Jack City has a gigantic red X just almost carved through the map with, with ink. You see all over the world places that you recognize as nations, homes, churches, refugee centers, lower tribes are marked for either destruction, conquest, or reclamation. And now, even though you can't get the greater details, you, you, you can kind of assess these are plans for a total planet domination war. Just gonna take that if I can. Yep, go right ahead and just kind of pocket that. Uh, and I once... still love that information could be also in some, like just given to the rest of the group going, hey, they're going to screw everyone over. Like everybody. <laughs> Whoever you don't like, <laughs> they're aiming at everyone. Yeah. <laughs> What was that line? What's his target? The world's his target. Uh, so yeah, you see that, and there's a bunch of papers, letters scattered about in Orkish, but it all does seem to have like there's color coordinations between things on the paper and things on the map. So I can't read it, but I will hold on to that dearly. Absolutely, great, great, great. Key item retrieved <laughs> <laughs> it's now in your key item inventory what a thunk just all right cobbledale just kidding world war yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know special <laughs> cobbledale get over it yourself <laughs> <laughs> happy happy vigil of forgiveness day what are we forgiving the world war we're about to enact sorry yeah, uh, so uh is there any place where I can uh, maybe hide to be near that metal door that you mentioned? Oh, yeah. You want to you wanna hide or just kind of sidle up to it? Be somewhere somewhere close to it. Uh, like maybe on the side or in the shadows, like to the side of it or, or something. Yeah. Um, you're very familiar with hiding inside uh, cramped hallways with doors. Uh so basically, you can just take that stealth check and sidle right upside the door. That way, whoever's in that door, they're never going to see you until they cross the threshold, and you can just pop, pop, do what you got to do. You understand. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love. Uh, 
give me a perception check while you're at the door. And if you have bonuses for hearing, that'll come in handy. Uh, I don't think I do. Uh, that is an 18 stealth check. Okay. So as you sidle up to the door, you hear two sounds. One, a sound echoing from way off down in the quarry, possibly the quarry uh, proper. And by the door, you hear, and I'm not being facetious, the echoing sound of silence. There is no life in that room, wherever that door leads. The sound of silence. I don't see or hear anything. Um, can I very cautiously check the door to see if it's locked? Yeah, go right ahead. Give me... Um... But I want to see if, like, if it's unlocked, like, very slowly, I want to see if, like, make sure there's nothing... I don't want to trigger any traps. I don't like doing that, so I would rather not... Absolutely. Give me a... Yeah, that's what I thought. Give me a thievery check. Okay. Who likes, who likes setting off traps? Why is it... Alright. I'm gonna use my hero point. Oh, no. My Maybe hero... Cool. My hero point to Demia. I'm gonna roll the same thing, so that didn't help me. That was a waste of a hero point. But I'll use that guidance to make it a 12. Yay! Not bad. So, as you check the door... I rolled two fours, you guys. <laughs> so oh. well. But then it came to trap potential trap stuff. Ah. And well, there good. it was. It's always, it's always the case, right? Like, I've had characters who suck at initiative rolls. They can do everything else well, but getting ready for a fight... You know, the thing that as fighters are supposed to do, they're like, I just need to find my center. Um, okay. But, so you open the door, you check the knob, it's unlocked. As you start applying pressure to the knob and gently start pushing on the door, there's no, there's no catch or trip. There's no pressure on the ground. There's nothing at the upper edge of the door frame. As you start to slowly open it, and the door opens wide, it is revealed to you there are no traps in the door, but there is an L-shaped hallway. Cool. I didn't get home alone. There's not a <laughs> flamethrower on my head. Cool. I just had a really horrible idea for a one shot. Now, anyway, continue. Home alone. Yeah, home alone. But you're the you're the burglar sneaking into this completely Where like trap me? ridden. Yeah. Yes. And the, and the uh, dungeon is a house in suburban California. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I will Chicago, but whatever. Yeah, I will go down the hallway. <laughs> As you go down the hallway and you sneak around to your right, Further away from my friends, <laughs> <laughs> all We're alone. All like, we feel him farther into the silence. <laughs> so much stress. <laughs> <laughs> so as you get into the uh, the right side of the hallway, the door. There's another door at the end of the hallway, and it's cracked open just a little bit, and you can see there is no movement, no rustling. The dead sound of silence continues to echo. And how far does this seem to go on? Oh, do you want to go into the room? Because this is like a five-foot walk to the door. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Why, why not? <laughs> sure. You open the door, and you see this... What would probably be a really nice office for the work boss of the quarry. In fact, as you're in this room, you notice a gigantic window facing the quarry massive you also note that what where maybe a table or desk would be uh there is just this really nice bedroll rolled out you see destroyed and battered and ruined are the wood pieces of said actual table thrown up against the wall kind of vertically um you see weapons strategically placed you see letters kind of neatly uh piled and you see what looks like uh two let's just say i hate to use the word fetish because i know that's not going to be 
received correctly, let's say effigies. You see two very unusual effigies kind of sitting on the ground by what could be considered maybe a makeshift shrine. Um, yeah, give me a... Um... No, wait a minute, you can't make a check because it's all in orcish. Crap. But that's the room you're in. You can do whatever you want to do. All right. Uh, well, there doesn't seem to be anything. Can I can I look out the the window uh, of the the so-called office the area into the quarry? Uh, do I see anything of note uh, outside? As you look out into the quarry proper, you notice now the quarry is easily two, maybe 300 feet deep. This place has been mined very, very low. You can actually see puddles of water, natural water from the earth, kind of starting to accumulate the base bottom of the uh, thing. Um, we have temporary lost Kaylee. Kylie. Maybe maybe Kaylee attacked Kylie. Either way, she'll be back soon. Um, so, you, well, Kylie will be back, but Kaylee... The evil robot version will not return. So, to answer your question, you see the quarry. It's been mined almost to the natural waterbed here. Inside this massive quarry, you find, um, in the dead center, this massive orc shouting to this army that surrounds him on different levels. You see... Other orcs with these massive spears painted pitch black. You see um, next to the orc, this gigantic orc. Hey, Kylie's back. I don't have to be the neighbor from Home Improvement anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy ho, neighbor. Howdy ho, neighbor Rooney. That's, that's never mind. <laughs> don't mess it up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the orc is shouting. Um, you can tell it's common because a few words are getting through the glass, but you're so far away, it's hard to pick up the whole thing. But you have an orc, another guy who looks just like Leontari, a bunch of goblins, hobgoblins, orcs, and then on the highest ridge of this massive quarry, you see what looks like 10, 15 griffins with orcs <laughs> straight... <laughs> we're, orc we're orcs now. Uh... So you see these 10 griffins with these orcs on top of them, kind of holding on these very uh, intricate um, saddles. And they have these reins. They have this giant uh, case filled with spears. And they have just a belt of axes going across their chest. And they're sitting there prepped and ready. Speaking of griffins, I am going to slowly tiptoe my way back the way I came. <laughs> uh, just a little awkward back step. Um, seems we've lost Kylie once again. She'll be back before you know it. So you can do that slow, awkward back step out of the out of the work boss office. Where do you go? Uh, I am going to go back to Eloise and our friend and kind of make a gesture of, of heading back and uh, is there like a, a higher layer where uh, Rufa and Shionibus might be? Will they be able to see me if I've gone to, to the, the center or is it is Unfortunately it, is no it Yeah you're still kind of in basically what is what you could argue is a cave structure so you're like in a right. cave structure and then it kind of like opens wide and into this deep quarry Okay, I wasn't sure about the, the ceiling part of it. So what I'll do is I will uh, head back to uh, Alona and Woodworks. Sure. As you come out, you start hearing a voice in your head. It's Eloise, and she just says, I made a new friend. Oh, and, no! And as you come out and you see her and Leontari, you see her talking to someone who's maybe like... Uh, maybe just about a foot taller than um, than Eloise, but not by much. And they're both having this really passionate conversation. And you hear this other voice, and it sounds like a little girl. And she goes, yeah, 
Yeah, no, the whole place. Yeah, stupid morons. They had no idea. I mean, I'm not. This isn't my home. I don't care. But what's important is that the whole place is rigged to blow. And you can almost feel the destructive energy in this voice. And you can almost feel the giant grin on their face. So we didn't need to make bombs. So, uh, this, it's, like, I imagine the voice is coming from behind me and is next to Eloise. Yes, it's definitely next to Eloise, and, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, does it seem to be a goblin, perhaps? Are you looking, or are you kind of assessing? Uh, both. Okay. As you look and turn around, you see Eloise now on the ground and not on the Atari, and she is talking to, looks like, a young girl from the uh, many different uh, braids that she has kind of uh, coming out and um, uh, her, her darker skin tone. You can tell she's probably from the same country Isawo is from. Is However, this Isawo's daughter? Sorry. <laughs> However... <laughs> However, the Spoilers. little girl, <laughs> she got Spoilers. excited. Well, yeah. Isawa did mention in episode one that his daughter was out somewhere. He sure did, and he said that she was smart. And you know, you know smart can mean big boom. And you can yeah. tell from her apron and her coat and these big gloves that she has on and this one big kind of shiny... Uh, uh, magnifying glass that's kind of like on her eye with the many ones over it that she she's probably pretty smart as she continues to go really it's all a volatile chemical i mean duh it's so easy it's like my first day science project all i had to do was activate the chemicals make sure there's enough room for the gas to grow and then once everything became this completely combustible completely isolated event then i got to show them the glory of my power and then of course they're probably gonna die but that's not my fault they're in the wrong place they should not be here this place is unsafe uh, pardon me as i, I approach them mm -hmm. uh greetings uh, it seems that you have met our friends, and motioning to both of them. She immediately goes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, I did. It was a pleasure meeting Eloise. She is very, very smart. I like her. Uh, and I also met Leontari. Leontari, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, he is a very interesting creation. I'm not a big fan of messing with bodily genetics, but, I mean, clearly, look at that. Well, it is very nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Mathias. What is yours? She didn't mean like big old wide hip stance, hands on her on her uh, uh, fists on her on her hips, and she has this big thumb. And she goes, "My name is Marilyn Legorunun, and I want you to say the whole thing every time. No take backsies, Marilyn Legorunun." I say that <laughs> correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled to say it right. Use your hero Marin point. Use your hero <laughs> point. <laughs> Marie I Lake. it on a nothing door. <laughs> so yeah, so she kind of smiles and she goes, it's okay if you don't get it right. Marinle Logorunun. But you know what? I'm going to keep correcting Logorunun. you. How's that? Let's try it the first part of my name. Marinle. Marinle. Let's go with, the, we'll just call it there. Marinle, because that's my first name. And then my last name is Logorunun. Logorunun. Un, two uns. Logo room. Yeah. Yes. And Hi. she and and she gets excited. She puts her fist in the air. Morinle logo runun, and you gotta say the whole thing. I did. Uh. <laughs> and, and she <laughs> she adjusts her glasses. She's like baby steps, baby steps. Indeed. Uh, speaking of, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, we have friends that we all need to reconvene with. Perhaps you would like to come with us, as we are in the middle of middle of a bit of a mission. Oh, I am also in a mission because nothing can stop an alchemist. I'm actually looking for uh, my teacher. Uh, maybe you've seen her around here. Um, she's a crazy uh, goblin about 
this big because it's like the exact height of Eloise. Uh, green skin, lots of sharp teeth, uh, very smart, a lot like me. Uh, her name is uh, Ka Horpa Bubba Boyle. I'm trying to find my <laughs> teacher. I, I'm afraid I have not seen anyone. I've only go, gone on the straight path, so I have not seen it. However, it is very interesting that you study alchemy. I have dabbled a bit myself in the alchemy. I myself was taught by a half orc. Oh, yeah. fascinating. You know, I have never had the pleasure to learning half orc or orc alchemy. I've learned goblin science and it is the best science because it is the only science that takes all of the chaos in the world and puts it into a chemical form complete with mathematical equations. Well, I hope it's similar. Uh, anyway, uh, would you like to meet my other friends? She, she kind of, like, starts to pretend she's all big and stuff. She goes, oh, yes, 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 quite right. I should meet your friends. Um, however, though, I do need to make sure I find my teacher. So if we can all find my teacher before I blow this place up and fire, I think that might be... I would, I would appreciate the team effort. You know, it's... I would be... We will help you find your teacher. I believe that with more of us, we can spread that search. And I'm very inclined to let you blow this place up, if that is your intention. We actually were thinking of doing the same thing. Ah, great minds and what what. Yes, yes, great minds. So I'm going to try to lead her uh, out the way I came to my friends. She she proceeds to, with great bravado and jubilee, tell you just a whole bunch of random facts about alchemy. You know, as you're walking out, she's just saying things like, did you know that hydrogen, a.k.a. one of the many building blocks of water, is the most stable form of, and just, and she doesn't care if you're well, interested or not. She's like, you're well, going to learn I today. Am. <laughs> I am. Can that uh, help okay. me a little bit? Like, note for later? Something? Yeah. In fact, she starts telling you a lot of uh, the the rules of um, playing with chemicals, you know, like bases, acids, you know, uh, catalyzers, and, and the whole thing. And she's just going on, and, and she looks like she's 12 by a human, and she's telling you, like, college-level chemistry uh, kind of things. Yeah, my I try to keep up, but my brain is kind of... I get a little glossed over a little bit because I'm like, Listen, I learned a little bit, but I didn't learn that much. <laughs> she takes it by the hand and pats your hand and goes, It's okay. We're all dumb one day. Oh, you do know I stab people for a living, right? And she goes, Yeah. And I control bombs. See? Working together in tandem. Now, <laughs> what does, does, the, does the term smoke bomb mean anything to you? Yes, yeah, a sulfurous combination of an equal parts uh, uh, actualizer catalyst and, of course, some sort of phosphorus or maybe even sulfurous substance. Of course! This is day one stuff, silly! Wonderful. I like them. I hope you do, too. I love them. They're great for making people choke and cough, and also when they're being annoying stupid heads and you're, you're in your way, and they're like, I'm trying to get my food! Smoke bomb! And then I run around them. Finally, another person who understands me. I look to Eloise and I say, Well, well picked. Well picked. Good friend. So, uh, in other words, this little girl is like Eloise 2.0? She's like demolitions. <sighs> Trade the tentacles for explodies. Yeah. I Instead of some, some deeper, mysterious being, she's all about that sweet, sweet science. Alchemy. So... Hello, friends. <laughs> yeah, so eventually, uh, by the way, I did the pre-rolls. You've been waiting for about 40 minutes, give or take. Huh. And once, um, all of a sudden, you see Leon Tari just lumbering out. You see Eloise in her goblin costume, but like the head's dipped back, so her head's exposed. And you see this new girl who's got these really cute black braids, and she, she's got the same uh, complexion as Isowo, but she has this really like slick, mad scientist meets Dexter's, Dexter's laboratory outfit going on. And, and she is just like, Hi! How's it going? My name is Marinle Logorunun, and you say the whole thing. I don't care how hard it is. Okay. Hi! I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Malinle Logarunun? 
Marinle Logarunun. Marin Marinle. Marin I have to say pi. You have to say it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, you say okay. the whole thing. Um, okay. I'll wait. Do you want me to spell it for you guys? That make it easier if I spell it for you. Ooh, go for it. I would okay. love that. All right. So for everyone playing at home, watching Man. at home, they got help. <laughs> yeah, and everyone else here. <laughs> Hey, but now you're you're the vanguard. Like you got to, you got to earn it. So, her name is spelled M E R I N L E, Marinle. That's so pretty. Yeah, and her last name, Logorunun, L O G O R U N hyphen U N. Logorunun. Okay. Why do you got? Why you got to do this to me, PJ? Seriously, I love it. I'm so <laughs> think, think of it this way, and this is God. I don't want to like be all like, look at me, but think about this way: how many how many little boys and girls had to grow up and had to teach people how to say their name correctly? I was one of those little boys. Exactly. Yeah. So now, welcome to Marin. Uh, Marin. Mar Mar oh, now I'm doing it. God dang it. Marinle. Marinle. <laughs> Logorunun. Welcome to Merinle Logorunun's life. She's like, I don't care how hard it is. You're saying the whole thing every don't worry. time. I understand the notion for people to put letters that don't exist into your last name. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. Yep. I will always remember third grade football where I was Sudrick, and that was the end of that. <laughs> Yeah, Thank my name is it. just five letters, M-E-G-A-W. I cannot tell you how many times I've been Magoo, McGraw, Megan. This one place, uh, this one high op thinks my name is Mihao. Like M-E-H-A-W-H -H or something crazy like that. Let's stick with Magoo. I like yeah. that. Yeah, good old Magoo. Mine is I've had Myler. And people put hyphens in mine what? still. M Myler in hyphen? I've had, my like... I've done Kaylee Myler, and I was like, what? Dude, you can't mess up Miller. How do you mess up Miller? Right? Right? Uh, Someone's just terrible. like, <laughs> Miller, here you go. Spell with like three Y's and two Q's. Uh, so yeah, so now you've all met Marinle Logarunun, and she is so excited to see you guys, and she is just a ball of energy. Okay. And uh, yeah, so... Oh, and she, she tells you all, Mm. I heard from a very reliable source, i.e. your friend over here, that you guys have placed bombs somewhere. So have I. Are we friends in science? Goblin science! Y yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if we used goblin science, but we used something. Uh, so yes, I think we're on the same page. How did you get here? Oh, I told my dad I was coming here. And then and, I came here. And who's your dad? My dad, well, my dad right now is currently working out of a town called Cobbledale. His name is Isowo, and he's my dad. And then sometimes we're not here. Sometimes we're somewhere very, very far away. It really depends on the day. Well, that is it's amazing. A, well, it's a good, I, good thing that uh, we caught you, because... You would have been buried in just a little bit. I'm pretty smart. I know what I'm doing. I'm pretty good with the things that go boom and other things, too. Oh, you're pretty good with the things that go boom. But we didn't know you were down there with the things that went, goes boom. We have stuff that's set up here that, that goes boom. She goes, <gasps> sabotage. How dare you? I could never trust you again. And she looks at you guys with this, like, awful shit and grin on her face. <laughs> well... Speaking of sabotage, well, at first it seems that your teacher is, your your mentor is somewhere amongst the quarry, I suspect. Yes! Claps her hands very loudly and excitedly and she goes, I'm looking for my teacher. I am looking, her name is Kahorba Bubble Boil. She's a very, very smart goblin, smartest goblin I've ever met, and I'm trying to find her. Why are you trying to find her? Because I'm... This place is going to blow up, and I don't want her to get caught in the explosion. What exactly does your teacher do? Why is she working for the orcs and the goblins? Well, my teacher is a goblin who knows goblin alchemy, goblin science, 
and we've been making booms, a lot of big booms. Um, but we don't like these goblins and these orcs. They're kind of, I think, mean, stupid, poopy head orc and goblins. They're at least a little stupider than us. And so we're kind of bored of these people. So we're going to get out of here. Now, we're going to blow this steam. I must ask you, where all have you placed these explosives? And that, do you have any in the middle, the center, perhaps? She gives you a, a wily grin as she adjusts her glasses, her glass, which now is completely opaque with the, the refraction from it. You know, the kind of anime moment where the glasses get hard to see? <laughs> yeah. Just nice. And she says, that's a secret. Well, uh, you don't have to tell us, I suppose, but... I should let you all know that I found what seemed to be a central office, uh, a place to overlook the proceedings of this whole operation. And down below, I saw many orcs, and it seems one just like our friend here, they all seem to be gathered near the center. If we can avoid conflict um, by blowing them up perhaps. Uh, while we're down there, have you seen anything or collected any sort of plans or books or anything about these extremely well, big orcs? I don't have anything of that sort. However, I pull out the map. I do have this. And it seems that these plans of attacking these cities go much farther than we anticipated. Now, uh, I cannot okay. read it. <laughs> <laughs> and I make a copy. Can I read it first? I hand it to Shionibus. Sure. Now, I cannot read what it says. However, I do recognize certain places. There are certain cities that I, I do notice based on the pictures. And it seems that they are attacking all of these places. It seems that this attack goes far and wide. And they are planning to hit almost everywhere. Uh oh. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie, uh -huh. you can read uh, Orcish. By the way, did you steal any of the letters and paperwork, uh, Casey, as well? Uh, no, just the only thing I took was the map. Okay. I thought about it, I was just like, I don't know, I just want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> like, this looks important, I guess. Uh, uh, so, Kylie, do you have any questions or anything else? Uh, is there a key on the map to kind of, like, get a basis of what the symbols are? There is a legend on the map. Um, it has different colors and shapes and, and things like that. Um, and in Orcish, it says things like uh, tribe territory, holy place, um, you see um, civilized holy place, holy capital, I'm sorry, civilized capital, civilized land, um, and you see different other symbols. Um, one is diplomacy, and the other is what loosely translates to Orcish, destroy everything with fire and steel. So, they, you know, that's what you got. Uh, and as you're looking through here, what you can see is that they mean to completely destroy and raise the entire empire of Adelphon. They seem to have plans for uh, invading most of the of the, the White Steppe North very far. You can see they wish to destroy the entirety of New Jack City. They wish to destroy the entire Akkadian Empire. They wish to invade, but this looks like it's later, judging by the ink. Uh, they wish to invade the entire Shin and Oryasu and other territories beyond the Great Divide. Um, a lot of places like the Order of the Platinum Hammer, uh, the City of Or and all the Origin Temples, uh, other major holy sites, they wish to destroy as well. Uh, they mark them for complete destruction by sword and fire. Um, now with regards to diplomacy, you do see there is a few circles. One is then labeled the Blue Rock. Um, they have a whole kind of plan on how to effectively diplomatize, if you will, 
the Blue Rock tribes. You see their entire land, you see little spots that are important to them, and you see ways to infiltrate and try to discuss diplomacy with Blue Rock. You see in the far north, the White Norths, the White Step tribe. You see a lot of different things there. Not a lot of notes are taken. Probably more information is put elsewhere. Elsewhere in the lands, you see one group. They talk about uh, very, very little. And the land they have is very small. Uh, you see one where it's like a circle and then kind of in Orcish, the Orcish equivalent of question mark. Almost like they're not sure how big it is. And then last but not least, they have in the middle of the ocean these giant question marks and it just says no idea where they're located. So some of the diplomacies laid out two diplomacies don't seem to be fully actualized on this map. So, as she's like scanning it, I say, so, from what I have gathered, circle means good, and X bad. You're welcome. I'm so <laughs> proud you're learning. I can read pictures. Yes, Michael? Um, I'm gonna look at the little girl. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna turn and ask, so, Mer- Merang Lang Lego Lunun? She looks at me and she goes, no, no, Marinle Logarunun. You say the whole thing. Logarunun. Marinle. Marinle. Logo. Logo. Runun. Runun. Now you say the whole thing. Marinle Logarunun. She looks at you, she takes her hand, she pats it very gently, goes, it's okay, we were all done one day. I'm still working on it. I'm only smarter than most of you, but one day I'll be smarter than all of you, and that's going to take oof, until I'm very old. Probably when I'm 16. Oof, I'll be hey, so old. That's a good, it's good to have goals. But uh, have goals. while you were down there, did you happen upon any information about the process on creating our friend here? And I motioned to uh, the Antari. She looks him up and down, and she says, Oh. She adjusts her her goggle, and she says, Oh, yeah, I was talking to uh, Ka Bubble Boyle about this. We don't approve of this science at all. We, generally speaking, try never to uh, attack genetical alchemy unless it is... Uh, a temporary fix, right? Like, one time my dad was having a headache. I said, here, try this. He said, I feel better. What is it? It's acetaminophen. You'll figure it out later. It was a great day. But the, the science behind it, uh, <laughs> is it a combination of just pure alchemy? Or uh, is there a magical process to it? Or a combination of both? Uh, the meat and potatoes of it. She stiffens up. She puts her arm behind her back and she goes, <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna. I, I take out my notebook, about to take notes. And okay, she says she approves that. <laughs> she does. She looks at her. She goes, "You're allowed." She gives that gesture, like you're allowed to write. And she starts walking in a circle. And she says, "I have written three theses on the efficacy and intricacies of goblin science, as I am the full uh, foremost specialist and and uh, uh, explorer of this art. Uh, my teacher, of course, being some of the others, but my teacher is currently lost in a death pit, but I digress. Goblin alchemy, or goblin science, as we call it, is a very articulate and intricate dance of chaos and order to the elements of nature around us and that which must be quelled from the worlds within worlds of chaos and hydrogen. So, goblin science is belief and alchemy put through the inner machinations of math and angles and spheres and chemistry. Basically, if you believe it and you think it real hard, you too can make a bomb big enough to blow up a bunch of stupid dummy smelly heads inside of a quarry. But is our friend Leontari, was he just believed into existence? Part of it was, yeah, judging by the looks of it, I'd say maybe, ooh, you're a big fella. I'd say... 50, 100, maybe 150 orcs had to die for a cause they were willing to die for to be a part of this, and the goblin making them had to believe that's all he needed. Souls or bodies twisted by belief that he could actually then harness that power. I'm guessing through a voltage equaling to over 2,022 megavolts or gigawatts, and then had to somehow, fu- I'm guessing with a sulfur con- 
Yeah, so there's a lot of chemicals and a lot of elemental things at play, but again, if no one believed it could be possible, if whoever made these guys didn't believe in his own brilliance, or even that it could be done, it wouldn't. So you would say this would be almost a divine science. She's a divine magic in play. She slaps you on the hand. No. No. No god in my science. No. Uh, like, how did I do? You're getting there. You're okay. getting there. Now, let's say that we go find your teacher, and then we do the very thing that you seem to want to do, which is blow all of this up. Because I, for one, do love the idea of ruining these horrible plans that they've made. She immediately gets this, like, gigantic toothy Cheshire grin. Her eyes are lost in the glare of her goggle, and she's like, yeah. Yeah, I like this plan. Yeah. Well, then, uh, we turn down there. May I ask if you come across it, procure any notes or uh, books pertaining to the creation of our large friend here? I don't have that, but I have this. She reaches into her uh, apron in front of her um, jacket and she pulls out a piece of paper with a bunch of writing in Goblin on it. She kind of hands around I'll, like, I'll, anyone? Uh, anyone? I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Do you, do you read Goblin? Do you speak no, Goblin? No, but I can copy it. <laughs> okay. Can so, I get like a I, basis? So well, we do have a halfway that is quite fluent in Goblin. That's Ooh. right. But I'm guessing it would totally take time to translate the whole thing, right? I mean, if you can read, if if uh, Amy's character can read it, and Mo, uh, Marinle kind of gives you this look, and she's like, spoilers, I can read and speak Goblin too. Uh-huh. Okay, then. Well, if you do not mind, uh, perhaps you could help me translate your paper. For science. So education. Uh, she looks at you and she goes, well, I'm sure me and my new bestie here had do not have the time to teach you the intricate, uh, uh, le- uh, hold on. I got to reset my brain. I offer her my pen. <laughs> She's like, we don't have time to explain to you the interest, the intricate, uh, dialects, the very unusual title riffics and diphthongs of our very, very awesome language. But what we will tell you is what it says. So she continues to basically read for you a letter that was translated into goblish, goblin, goblin, probably for the hobgoblins, but, you know, goblins being what they are, they probably stole it off of a hobgoblin and ran away with it. Um, They do say in the letter a handful of things. One of them is that, yes, you are going to be attacking Adelphon Prime in the Adelphon uh the, the Adelphon capital in Adelphon. They say when you go there, there should be no military resistance. Our spies and moles within Adelphon have ensured us that all the Knight Senatari and all the senators are on recess. Most of their military is divided amongst their city states, so they have no strong force to defend themselves. While everyone's on effectively a holiday, you can march in and blow up anything you want. That's one oh, thing. The other thing that they mention, uh, they talk more in depth about the other tribes of orcs they have tried to convert, and they name them as thus. The Blue Rock tribe. They say the Blue Rock are resisting unification due to the fact that they believe our efforts at a grand orc world goes against business. Another word says White Step Tribe. They refuse to give any effort because they are currently busy warring with the elves in the far north. There's another note that says the Grey Shadow. And let me know if you mean to go back and repeat this. The Grey Shadow Tribe refuses any of our missives because they believe it goes... I'm sorry. Because it goes against their beliefs. The Goldfire Tribe. We would never 
give this tribe an invitation. They have lost honor, and they have turned their back on Gorm. Oh. And last but not least, Bun-loving tribe. We can't find the Bun-loving tribe. They have responded with absolutely no discourse with our many offers and our frequent summons. Wherever the Bun-loving tribe is, they refuse us. The ever-elusive bun lovers. Damn. You so, never see them coming. Nope. But man, they are just... They're so sticky, you know, they're so hard to find, but when you get your finger like, on them, oh, it's delicious. I also argued that that's us. <laughs> <laughs> so... We our buns here. Yeah, so you have the Blue Rock tribe who hasn't joined up yet because they believe it's bad for business. However, you can tell from a map, this coalition is working on flipping the Blue Rock tribe to this greater war effort. The White Step is refusing to fight because they have a war with the Elves. The Grey Shadow Tribe says they refuse to join because it goes against their beliefs. Not much else on that. Rock Goldfire seems to have turned their back on Gorm, and they have lost honor, and therefore they would never dare ask the Goldfire to join. And the, bu the Bun-loving Tribe is a mystery. They are elusive. They're out there in the world somewhere. Um, the Missive does say, make sure to use your goblins as the first wave they are mentioning the specific tribe of the nashi bites the nashi bite tribe is said to be the shock troops before the orcs and the hobs move in and then uh it says something in orcish but it's kind of poorly translated into goblin and that is your spearhead for this operation will be Champion Zanakin, who should be mobilizing you now. Please accept this unit of Red Rock Battle Flyers. You only get 10, but if you're smart, Zanakin, that's all you'll need. Signed, General Korakos. Again. People. Michael. A question. In this world, um, like intelligence level of like hobgoblins would would you say be like on par with human hobgoblins yeah oh yeah um i would argue all of these creatures are on par with basic human intelligence the issue is where their focus lies hobgoblins so, uh, are more focused on oppressing order onto the chaotic brethren that is the goblins they need to keep these little so cats in their bags minded right Think of it this way. Think of that big brother that was constantly trying to get you to like straight up and fly right. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that they need order as that they just need these little psychopaths to just listen. Okay. That's hobgoblin mentality anyway. That's why they're considered the work the work bosses and the taskmasters. They're the ones that have their middle big management. brawny. Yeah, they're middle management, exactly. Okay. All right, I'm going to look at the back to parties. Huh. So, apparently there are moles and traitors within Adelfont, uh, Cobbledale. Was it Cobbledale or Adelfont? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, they have been attacking Cobbledale. However, this missive is a new marching order to Adelfont Prime, okay. the capital city of Adelfont. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a traitor in the midst of Adelfont Prime, which is very disconcerting. We need more information. Perhaps, perhaps we are, if we are able to capture a hobgoblin. Sheridan, could, I wonder, I, I wonder, Sheridan, if that is who your friend was seeking. He did mention he had a certain senator in mind that he needed to eliminate. Perhaps. Mr. Voss knows something. And he was speaking about the senator? He mentioned a senator that he needed to kill. I have... Let's say I've had close encounters with my fair share of politicians. And... They are not easily trusted. At all, you and, in fact. You and me both. So, yeah. I believe there's... Well, play here. Well, hold on. 
I mean, listen to all this. If we take out everybody who's inside this core now, we may not have to worry about Edelfund all that much. We true, get there when we get there. True, but I do worry that this is not the entire attacking army. There is definitely more to be had. So if we had a hostage we could capture to interrogate like a hobgoblin or so, we could find information because the senator or whoever is in the pocket of this army, they would need a way to get information from him and we would know this senator's identity if we interrogate someone who knows said information. Here's the thing. If Hobgoblin's middle management, they're not going to know anything. If we're going to interrogate someone, it sounds like we need to interrogate this general Korkos or champion Zanakin because there's the, they are the one in charge. A stealth mission is not going to be known to the general public or the general troops. So taking a hobgoblin, I'm not sure, would do anything. I do not know if it is of value, but when I entered the office, there was an upturned table and it looked to be one of a few possible things. Either there was some sort of argument about this plan or the proceedings of this plan, or perhaps there was an attack. I was not able to discern which, but something occurred there, and the office was empty. It seems that there, whatever there may be, this cannot be all of it, but it seems that someone, somewhere, has moved on. But I still have no problem weakening their resources with these. But it seems that this is not our final destination. You know who may have that information or know where to get it? Our little friend's friend. We gotta go in and get our friend's friend before the bombs go off. Because they may know where we're look where the information we're looking for is stored. Well, we're in the uh, room. How does that I sound at, to you? <laughs> I look at the girl go, does your friend perhaps know of said information? She, she puts two fingers up. One, she points to Matheus, and she goes, Merilinde... Oh my god, I'm doing it again. Merilinde... <laughs> <Is that Louis? laughs> no, 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 no excuse, no excuse. You will say I'm the not, name right. You will I say am. the name right. She Do says, she says, Merilinde Logarurun thinks that's a great idea. I am very excited we're together to find my teacher. And then she, with the other finger, she points to Rufa. And she says, and no, we think these people are idiot stupid heads, and we don't listen to their dumb dumb science. Their dumb dumb science is blah blah blah, war war war. Blah. Our science is better. And hey. ba basically, she does this hand gesture like, these people, they're basic. I have a feeling her name thing is going to be like the Brooklyn Nine Nine, Nicholas. It's Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say it right, no matter what. She is she is but, a warrior for her name. She's like, my name is Marinle Logorunun, and you're gonna say that every time. I don't care. Man, certainly try. Well, mm -hmm. got it. Where was the last place that you remember seeing her, or any inkling of where she might have gone? Last time I checked and remembered, we were currently placing the bombs around the centrified infrastructure near the quarry in the major rooms. She told me to go right, she went left, and I haven't seen her in about three hours. I'm assuming that if she's not caught, if she's not captive, she's probably hiding somewhere with the other goblins near the quarry. She does love playing pranks on other greens. Well, Marinle Logarunun, why don't we uh, head on in there and uh, sure. see if we can uh, <laughs> see if we can catch her? She gives you a great big, very strong hug, and she says, "I love your accent. Nice try. Let's go." <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go take a ten minute break. When we get back, Marinle Logarunun, Logarunun, and everyone here is about to have one last pass. How do you pronounce it? Screw you, PJ? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs>
Marinde Lokorunun, it is Yoruba. Get it right. Uh, all right, so we're going to go on a 10 minute break. We'll be right back at 9.50. Uh, we'll see you soon. Today. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It's great to see everyone here. Uh, thank you for like, giving us our 10 minutes. I don't know why everyone's laughing. I, I anyway, my my school of rock reference barely caught it on to the stream. <laughs> <sighs> I look behind the veil. We like school of rock. Uh, all right. So, without our 10 minutes, get up and stretch and. Now we're back to continue to tell the story. So, Marinle Logorunun is teaming up with these amazing heroes to find her lost teacher in the middle of a military march that's being stationed in the start of a quarry and then might destroy the world. So, what's the plan? Well, she mentioned... Kid, are you? Direction. Go ahead, Casey. Well, she mentioned the direction that she was last seen in. So, I think she said left. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> said right. She went left. Or the girl went right. The teacher went left. Uh, really fast. Um, Mr. Powell, what's up? Before we head out, um, Rufa's going to ask um, Meringue Lang, Lego Loon Loon. Kind of close. Um, is there a way to perhaps uh, set up these charges remotely? Do you she know looked, of a way? She looks at you with giant eyes, the kind that now the sun makes them almost invisible behind her glasses. And she says, remote, de remote detonation is the best detonation. And you see she starts pulling out from behind her uh, uh, apron a bunch of long wires. And she's like, if I can get these near any of the devices, I can remote detonate enough volatile chemical to send that big guy into the sky. I'm, Rufa's going to just gesture to the charges that they set. What about these? And she's like, crude, effective. Give me five minutes. I think the group knows where I'm kind of going with this. <laughs> Oh, you want to add your bombs to the pile? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that way when we're down there, we could we don't have to be anywhere near the charges. Yeah. She well, we still gotta find the teacher. Yeah. yeah. When we get the teacher, we just GTFO. Don't worry, we're not gonna blow ourselves up when we have the remote. <laughs> <laughs> so she you see her start to work with the wires and she stops and goes, Wait a minute. Do you want this? on a closed loop circuit or do you want this on a split circuit uh, do you want this on one big boom or do you want this on two controlled blasts Marinle Logorun I look her yes. directly in the eye and she gives you a big point and she's like you said it which method do you prefer and she kind of Betty, thinks about it Betty the, Betty the entire encampment and she says as much as I love the collective sight of over 30 payloads going off at once what's important is to have a strategic exit route or else you'll be trapped in about I'm thinking 300 pounds or 300 feet of earth and rock and an entire army of orcs that are alive Ooh. split then Ooh. split circuit okay hold on she she takes her, her apron back she looks into her apron she goes I have two triggers I can apply one, and she starts taking a few of them. I can apply one circuit to one trigger, and then I can apply another circuit to another trigger. Basically, if I press the left switch, your bombs blow up. If I press the right switch, my bombs go off. And Is she's that very my excited. left or your left or right? Just in <laughs> case we gotta pass them off. I wanna. Are we? Is there stage directions involved in this, or <laughs> who's on first? <laughs> Maybe we should just color code them. She she hugs the devices to her chest. She goes, "My bomb, they're my bombs." I thought those were I'm ours, though. <laughs> At least I'm not responsible <laughs> for it. No, it's a little kill everybody. <laughs> she's hugging the bombs and she's like, "My triggers." Then either way, mine. She, she says mine. Sorry, I'm sure that I don't know if I picked up. She's like Gollum. She's like, <laughs> my bitches. 
<laughs> my boomstick. Yeah, she's like, fine. <laughs> um, well, so yeah. I only see a pro- one problem with our plan. Only one of us looks like a goblin. How are the rest of us going to get in there? I do not have time. I have a plan, maybe. Okay, let's hear it. I'm with it. Go for it. I mean, apparently, I'm already General Korakos. So I could just walk. I'm sure they don't know what the other camps look like, right? An elf would be a general, right? Would they be expecting an orc? I, I mean, may, I do wonder if they've ever met this general. Yeah, I'm kind exactly. of with They may not, and if Shionobis Shiod- walks in with our big guy behind her, it may be convincing enough that she didn't get destroyed in the first place. I mean, it's exactly. a bold bluff. But Especially I like considering this sounds like... Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. If you go in but with him, how many of us are in the backpack? <laughs> That's well, right. At the Boos. very least, if they were to somehow come on or break your cover, as it were, if you were, if they were to know that the previous general was defeated by your hand, it seems to be something that they might respect. Oh. Perhaps even fear. Battle of... Uh, Battle of Honor? Orcs tend to do a lot of things with honor, I feel like. Can I do, um, yeah, is there any check I can do, like a society, maybe it's a society check? Me too. Or a check? <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> let's, let's divide and conquer on this. I will give, uh, uh Kylie a society check, and because she speaks and, and knows the Orcish language, I'm going to say that in her, her time traveling and learning that language she can kind of recall some knowledge about that society. Now, as for our amazing Cloister Cleric, I will say you can make a religion check, if you wish, about the Orcish culture and their pantheon, if you will. But you hate religion. Can I provide aid to (laughs) Kylie? Uh, sure, yeah, if you want to do society, go right ahead. Yeah, society. I'm really good at that. It'll be be a high roll, because unfortunately you don't know Orcish, but you can still try to help out. I... I stay away from religion, so I would. I have no help. <laughs> it, it's okay. Uh, Marinle is like, I know, right? Ugh, dear Sky Father, who makes cake? It's goofy. Um, does does the guidance still is the guidance still in play? Do I still get that plus one from guidance or no? Uh, yeah. Maybe you used it to uh, place your bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Then it would be used up. Okay. I got a fifteen. All right. Uh, Kylie, what did you get on your, uh, not survival, your society roll? Did you give me aid, Michael? Yeah, I got 25. Okay, I'll give you... Uh, Yeah. I'll give you a plus one. A plus plus one? That's a 24. Not bad. Damn. All right. So, Shionibus... Look at my notes here. Apologies for the delay. Shionibus, you know from your time hunting and fighting and learning Orcish society, uh, obviously they have many different tribes, you know, um, and these tribes have maybe similarities between them, uh, but you have learned that the old saying goes, no people are a monolith, the same for the orcs. While they may prize efficiency, while they may prize individual glory, and while they may prize some other things as trophies and signs of, of, of their efficacy, um, different tribes also have different codes of conduct, different things that they take deeply into uh, account. So what I'll say is, ask me one tribe, one tribe, and I'll answer more details about one of those tribes. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh... What about the buns? <laughs> <laughs> How can we find the bum loving tribe? Well, I'm glad I, you asked. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about them buns. You weren't about the bun loving tribe. All right. I'm so glad you asked because it wasn't like I'd spent all day today and yesterday creating their lore. So, bun loving tribe. 
The bun-loving tribe was at one point named something else. It was actually named the Golden Pastry Tribe. The problem was that this tribe had a hard time dealing with infighting, uh, as well as uh, a lot of problems with other orcs. Now, most orcs are uh, tend to be conflicting with each other by their nature, but the bun-loving tribe uh, effectively had this go way too far, and this caused a massive disgrace. Uh, they lost one of their precious leaders, and then they had to take up all of their campsites, they had to take up all their mysterious and long-treasured uh, formulas for the best sticky bun you've ever had, and since then, they were lost their nomadic ways. No one knows when or where they'll find a sticky bun orc, or a bun-loving orc, I should say. No one knows at one point their ambushes of delightful tastiness may attack you. But one thing is for certain. They are the best-kept secret in orc society, as the other orcs themselves have lost their brethren. And now, scour the land for the lost tribe of Gorm, the bun-loving tribe. Dun -dun. They I feel like they're alchemists pastries. for pastries. Maybe. <gasps> so... Chefs? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> like a bunch of Gordon Ramsay orcs or something? <laughs> no, <gasps> that again, terrifying! That yeah, explains it, the infighting. Infighting, not to mention problems with other tribes. They lost one of their big leaders. They had to go out on the road. No the great really orcish bake-off. Yeah. All right, I think I know what character to make after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my god. Orc chef. You can make him... Gordon Ramsay? You, sir, earned a hero points because hey, you're... I might put it to good use this time. <laughs> so, speaking of that, um, uh, Sydney, you're you gotta help us though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't recall any inf interesting information about the way of the sticky bun, but you do recall that orcs believe in one and only one god the god that gave them life in the world. He gave them the strength of their muscle, the feral tenacity of their blood, and demanded nothing else from them that they use it. He does not grant gifts. He does not answer prayers. All blessings done by him was done at their birth, and from then on, he is a silent watcher. Orcs still worship him in their traditions. He is called the Lord of Scars from his many battles with the gods. And to pay homage to this great, great orc, all orcs participate in a ritual, I'm sorry, a ritual scarification. Or they treat battle wounds from fighting as a great success and not failure. This god's name is Gorm, father of orcs. And he wishes only for his children to be strong, with the strength to resist cities and nations, and to bring about a world where the tribes can roam free in chaos, the nature that they believe was intended for them. So Gorm is a big deal to many, many people. And their society kind of has this, and again, it's different depending on which tribe you go to, but their society is really big on, how can I put this best? The efficacy of belief, the efficiency of shamanism. They don't mess with anything that doesn't work. If it's like, hey, this is a prayer we do, they'll look you right in the eyes and go, but does it work? And you're like, well, I mean, not all prayers about does it work, then shut up. And that is the kind of no-nonsense belief that they hold. The spirit of war, the spirit of conflict, the spirit of their body being a tapestry of survival. And it goes into many aspects of their ways, their culture, their mysticism, if you will making sure that only the most potent spiritual energies, only the most potent shamanistic practices are maintained. Mm. Um, what was your number again? 15, 17? 15. All right, that's all I'll give you for now. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I didn't, I don't know of any uh, ritual that we could have where it, you could be the new general. I guess we might just have to go in there and really wing it. Try. <laughs> wing it. Yes. Yeah. Michael Powell. I was wondering, is there a way to use like assorted makeups and stuff to make her look like a half orc? To make her look like a half orc? Yeah. How much time does that take? Well, 
an entire evening as <laughs> that was making an entire outfit this was just you know hair and makeup hmm there is a she few her hair as much as I would love to see the dish, montage dish, dish, dish. <laughs> as much as I would love to see the montage of that awesome hair work um you you kind of note some how do I put this let's just say her ears and her frame kind of a dead giveaway well what we can do since scars are a big part of their religion and their belief if we had enough time to do some quick makeup we could give her some really interesting classic scarification i mean i already have a bunch of scars so well really but i mean like you don't need to be more i wouldn't you gotta give me more you know people think like, scars yeah are but you have the cool one cool, that goes so. this way yeah, yeah the one down here. Just give me some, like, or around, one. Uh, across the nose. Yeah, or across the yeah. nose. Yeah. I mean, I already, I already have this one, so I mean, just oh, give me you like. Do. Yeah. Then you need give to scratch it across the Yeah, Larry and gave it to <laughs> me. <laughs> the the morel, yeah. the red, the, the morel yeah. top special. Yeah. <laughs> or like claw marks that like came from here. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Larry and gave me this one actually. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. He's somewhere, he's somewhere in a river, just like. Well, no wonder you drowned him. I feel like people are talking about me. <laughs> right? Someone sneezes. Yeah. <laughs> will, like, will, we able to, will we be able to like maybe like stuff um like leaves and stuff to make her look bigger with a coat on? You know, well, it's I mean, possible. All right. She's not gonna have her cloak on because all her scars are like back and shoulders and arms. I think, okay, so this, listen guys, we have the opportunity to either do something really great or really dumb, and I think we should just do it. If Shionibus goes in there, and we're like, her posse, we're like backing her up, like, yeah, she's the new General Korkos, take it. And we all just like aid her in her massive deception we might get lucky, or we'll find out. All right. So... Dude, this turns to Matheus and is like, "You're rubbing off on her." I have said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're working together to last minute cosplay another disguise so all I, all I can hear is my in my head and see in my head is alona doing the side thing yeah. like spice up your life like that's has, has anybody ever seen yeah. this animated series called clone high yeah yeah i love it <laughs> makeover 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 oh my god uh okay uh everyone give me survival checks to look for materials this will be your uh your aid check for the disguise check that's going to be made after this well what was it sorry survival as you're looking oh, for okay. materials around yeah yeah uh let operation spice girls commence 19 <gasps> or <I'm> not, not. <laughs> <laughs> okay so maybe it's a scary spice because he's, he's Terry. He's Stabby Spice. That's what he is. Okay, Stabby Spice. We have Snooty. Um, uh, we have Snooty Spice, who's Posh Spice, and that's Shionibus. Shionibus mm. is, is Posh Spice. We have. That's not Rufa. <laughs> oh darn it! I was gonna okay. say. <laughs> okay, so Rufa's you know. Posh, and then we have Sporty. Are you sporty Shonibus? Someone figure this out in chat, please. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to be an interesting... You so think of that and let my 10 that I rolled really help you. There we <laughs> go. <laughs> Apparently Chad's saying you're baby spice. Who? Sydney. Yes. It's me, I am baby. I can see that. I thought about Woodward yeah, being Woodsy yeah. Spice, but then I realized that I was just going to be an All Spice commercial like deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so All Spice? Woodsy Spice. Oh, yeah. cool, great. I'm a deodorant. So I was love to see that. Just just you said there, hi there. Do you smell like the southbound of a northbound orc? Don't worry. <laughs> Put this on your body. It'll make you smell good. Because I guess that's important. Woodsy Spice. <laughs> the city folk. 
Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, the big like one, like Also, yeah. our athlete is <laughs> Gary in her, in her own way. So. True. Uh, uh, PJ. PJ. Uh, yes, Michael. I got a 19. All right. Uh, really fast. Um, Woodward, what is your survival check? Oh, I got a 25. Hell yeah. Um, uh, I know the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sydney, what was yours? Uh, 22. All right. Nice. Okay. I read a lot Perfect. about survival in books. You got your, your smart survival on. All oh, right. Oh, my God. So the good thing is, is that <laughs> as as Rufa, as you are coming up the plan and frantically looking for materials, you're able to shout out your laundry list of what you need. And thankfully, thankfully, with all of your knowledge and acumen, you are now able to give him a plus four on this crafting check to make this disguise. Slap um, on the back with guidance. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna allow it for now, but I think I have to look up to see if that's actually plausible. I think a plus four is the highest you can get, but I'll say plus five for now. So yeah, give me a. I didn't say five. Yeah, give me a. Uh... Oh, you know what? Give me a deception check. Okay. Ooh, Ooh Looks I'm, like I'm good with that actually. Hey. Mm -hmm. Every time, every single time when it's these kind of rolls. Hero point? No, well, that's a nat 20. 20. Yes! Yeah. Woo! First son of the night. Cosplay. <laughs> King of cosplay. I'm good at cosplay. Well, uh, Shion Abyss, after... Hold on, I'm going to make a d4 roll. You want to know how good you are at cosplay, Michael? Oh. You gave her a 34 deception check <laughs> in one hour. That's better than Eloise's goblin costume. What I, I say, like my dear. Do I say not. 30? Yeah, that's about right. Mm -hmm. I Go like ahead. my dear. Do not try to move too much around the shoulders. Remember, chin up, arch, and it's all confidence, darling. Confidence. Oh, I don't have any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Until you make it. Shodabis just got the Batman treatment. Yep. Right. <laughs> it's like I can't turn my neck. My arms get kind of stuck. Uh, I was really fast, Michael, for stitching together this amazing lie. You get a, a hero point uh, hey. for that. Um, all right. So, Shionibus, are you ready to pretend you're General Korakos? It's ready as I'll ever be. Okay. I do, yeah. I do have to say. I really like that this party's go for it plan is now just we're gonna make a disguise. <laughs> we're like <laughs> <laughs> the what is literally at the bottom of everyone else's list of how to start anything is like, no, we'll start with the disguise. Go with the for sure thing and then we'll see how ridiculous we can get from there. Yeah. I mean it's going great so far. Yeah, I know. It's it's, for, it's surefire. Mm hmm Yeah, honestly, the, the disguise value is about the same. The only difference was that you put guidance on him, so it was like Eloise is a 33, you're a 34. It's right there neck and yeah. neck. Um, all right, so you go in. Uh, you see everything I described to me at this earlier. You see this little cubby, cubby off to the left where there's a buttload of overturned uh, carts. The three goblins are now passed out on the floor. Um, whatever they were fighting over seems to be torn up in little pieces and resting on their bellies. Um Number two, you see the uh, makeshift orc barracks. You see the war table now missing a map. You see the other map hanging up. Um, you also see the door that I'm assuming our boy Matheus closed that leads to the former work boss office. And as you start cresting the end of the hallway, this massive wide open hallway, you start to see this blinding, searing white light. You know, like when you step out of your house for the first time in quarantine, the sun's a big old son of a bitch. It's like that. Um, and as the burning kind of fades and your eyes adjust to the light from being in the cave, you see this two to three hundred foot deep kind of cone going inward with different floors and levels to it of this quarry, massive rocks, 
two giant uh, puddles of natural water deep within the earth that are being exposed from how deep they've dug. And you see this scene that I've uh, described to Casey a little while ago. You see this orc, big powerful orc, wearing this long black mantle. And he's got uh, a bunch of trophy animals kind of pinning it like a pauldron, like a, a, a makeshift chess piece in this large black pitch spear. He's got another unit like Leontari right next to him. You see this like crowding, rampaging army of orcs and goblins and, and hobgoblins like cheering in their native tongue. And you see on a high, high perch, 10 griffins with what look like orc riders arms folded, a belt full of axes, and a giant uh, a holder for a bunch of spears. And they stand there watching. Um, these riders seem to have different war paint than the others. And Shonibus, you're surprised to hear in common, not orcish, the voice deep, deep within this quarry, echoing out to the whole dig site, shouting, your purpose from this point onward is chaos. But with our chaos comes a plan. We fight. We kill. We feast our gnashy little teeth so that in the years to come, we can dismantle the world of man. For too long have their kind built empires and pillars upon our soil. Too long have they called us barbarians, noble and savage alike. From this moment on, we listen to the words of General Korokos as he grants us vision and wisdom. And one day, when we stand in a world that is truly free, we will thank Korokos, and we will credit it all to the great green king that has come from us from across the stars. So if you die on this day, I ask you two things of your leaving life. Take one of those stupid humans with you. And die knowing that your children, the Green King, will see them lifted into the hands of a greater God. I am the champion of the Black Spear. I am champion Zanachan. And everyone starts losing their minds. Oh, damn. So... <laughs> so two things we got out of that. They're both dudes. And... That they know of. <laughs> and, uh, this and I'm gonna die. <laughs> to really worship General Corcos. <laughs> Um, there's that small part of me, like when he mentioned the the other giant orc, that's just like, let them fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I have plans. Uh, Woodward, I for Woodward, I rolled a twenty-two perception check to look around for a goblin that fits oh, the description. Are we, are we down there with uh, all of us down there with them? I thought we were backing her up as a oh. hardcore posse. Okay, well, we're like, we're like. Oh, uh -oh. No. <laughs> okay. Is so, Leon Tari with us? Mm -hmm. Leon Tari has never left your side. He is currently just okay. standing behind you, and he kind of like takes a big knee and he leans and he says, "Unit Command Leon Tari, asking Commander for target." He's like uh, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, a little the golden retriever. He is. He's like, go fetch. I fetch now. I fetch. Good boy? You can bring you that whole tree. <laughs> <gasps> Leon Tari, go no. find Target Tree. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Michael Powell, really quick, what's up? Um, I know I can't read Orcish, but when we pass by the table with all the letters and stuff, I was wondering if it'd be possible for me to kind of 
steel, anything that looks like an important document, like looks official-ish. <laughs> I mean, it all looks like like simple papyrus with orcish scribblings. So you can just kind of like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just okay. drag across. I'll, you mean I'll do that. font papyrus? Is the font papyrus on papyrus? Look, man, that's it's comic sans. It's comic sans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just helping please eat comic Orcus, sans. <laughs> Orcus is all just comic sans. It's all right. Uh, uh, Goblin's just wing doodle or wing nut. <laughs> wing dings! Wing dings, <laughs> that's right. Okay, that's... So, uh, you just... <laughs> your perception check, Woodward. You look around. It was, a, was it again a 20 what? 22. Okay. You look around, you see a few things of interest. One, the 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 Red Rock Battle Flyers who are on their griffin, and you can tell they're Red Rock because they have lots of red on them. They don't seem to really buy this whole thing, but they're like, but I came here to murder, so I'm going to murder. Like, yeah, okay, sure. Black Spear Tribe, uh, whatever. Uh, they don't seem to care. Um, you also see, speaking of not caring, there is a goblin in the midst of the chaos who's just like, whoa. Uh. Y yeah, violence. Whoa. Ah, like they're they're very half-hearted. Um, it stands out so much that it's clear to see that in the the midst of this speech, this war march, that this this person would be ignored. But looking right at them, you're like, oh, you're not. You don't care. You're not like every other goblin here. Um, and you can even see this goblin like, yay. <laughs> Um, uh, yay! Like, just does not care. I think uh, Woodward looks over and says, Eloise! Eloise! Get inside that one's head just like you did to Matheus! Do the head talk! Get her! Hey. Get her done! Now, I think I have the the astrological permission of uh, Amy to say this. Like, her eyes bulge and she says we save the bitches <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so uh, she yeah. says that and she goes into her head um and Eloise definitely kind of goes she confirms that this person is bubble boil mostly because she called everyone a big meanie stupid head <laughs> and a bunch of other things that are very not repeatable. And 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 Marinle is like, that's my teacher. She's a wordsmith and a chaos theory expert. Eloise, tell her to leave. Just tell her to get out. Just tell her to just tell her to go. <laughs> GTFO. She tells her that, and then she kind of says. She's leaving, I guess. She, she informs with this confusion, like, yeah, I guess she's leaving. Um, you see the goblin, like, sitting going, yay, yay. Grabs a rock, bashes one goblin on the head with it, throws at the <laughs> other goblin, then runs off. And as that happened, you see the other goblin looking at the one she just wounded, looking at the one with the rock, and he goes, ah, and then jumps on that one. Somewhere there's a hobgoblin is like, Ugh. Like, I got my eye on you two. Stop it. And then they're like, ack, ack, ack. And the the big hobgoblin's like, ugh. <laughs> they're like, oh no, one of you died. What a surprise. Look at this man when he's talking to you. And the goblin's just back on. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, so you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me she's just started a mini riot. A very small four person riot that a hobgoblin quickly suppressed. And he's like, hey, did somebody throw a chair? <laughs> Hold on, rolling for And then yeah, there's another assembly definitely... to talk about how poorly we behaved in the first assembly. <laughs> <laughs> like Xanakin comes out with a giant board. I want to talk about bullying. And someone's like, boo, you suck. That was bullying. Uh, anyway, she, she eventually, after a long time, is able to like scatter up to you. She looks just like a normal goblin. And she's like, she looks at Marinle, says to her in, in Goblin. Marinle repeats it back and says something else, and she goes, Um, <clears throat> me very sorry. Me good clothes wearing Mickey pants are not here. 
I hope and you can forgive us me for not wearing nice fancy uptown pants clothes. I'm sorry. I have been playing Heidi with moron dum-dums. Very good. I best. They stuck. They suck. They stupid. So, um, my acolyte. I have hidden all Boomy Boom think bombs all over place place. All we need and do is tie him up with wire stick and make dummy plunger boom pop. And Marinle is like, hmm, yes, this is notable science. I agree. Yes, yes, very wise. And then and then you see Bubble Boil go, yes. Plan wise, smart thinking make. Creation words tongue flaps are very smart smart. But how big boom gonna be? We only know find thinky find when boom boom kick off witness. Wait, what are you guys doing here? She kind of like has this epiphany. Wait a minute. Who are you? Who send you group people? Well, you see, we came with our own bombs to join the party. You know, when you when you hear there's a shindig, you bring what you can. And oh, it's good to bring a gift. Exactly. It's hospitality, really. Bubble Boil's smile grows the size of half her head, full of sharp teeth, and her eyes seem to almost, like, vanish in excitement. Uh, and you realize this is the exact smile that Marinle has every time you guys get her really excited. Uh, the Grinch. <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> that wonderful <laughs> idea. He has so, some charges set up uh, to create a avalanche, I think, enough to bury this entire gulch. Uh, Marine Lake does kind of relay this in Goblin, and she... Bubble Boil responds and says, Yes. Yes. Plan crafting, brain bubble making, yes. Me formulating a smart idea. I have solution. We get all bomb, make one big bomb, and then we put it in there. Wait. Where do you put bombs? We We're using bomb placing. Pointing over to the bridge, <laughs> to to the to the entrance. Uh, yeah, to uh, where we well where we set the charges. Okay. That direction, a general area. Bubble boy looks at it there. and goes. Ah. Uh, she says something. A goblin, Marinle responds in goblin, and she goes. Already made wire. Poop. We're stuck. We stuck group now. Ditch. Okay. I have, and she kind of like reaches into some unusual pocket and <laughs> pulls out a bunch of cables and goes, I wired all number one booms down in bottom hole. We attach to my acolyte's other dummy boomstick, and then we do one and then the other. Is that, is Bubble Boyle knowing this right? Sure, I mean, as long as they get I'm to the aiming. bottom of the ditch with rocks, we're good. <laughs> So that was a collective yes I'm taking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, now the question is, as Marin Lay and Bubble Boil uh, mentioned, it's like, well, do we want to blow up one now and surprise them and then blow the other one up as they're leaving? Do you want to pop them both at the same time so they can't follow? What do you guys want to do? I would like the GTFO, if possible. Yes. Oh, well, it is good to note we do have ambushes. Set up in case this goes awry. We got other friends. That's true. And if we can cause some sort of rock slide, as it were, perhaps that would force them to exit another way where we do have others waiting. We could force them out another direction. Kylie, you're this is the only way in or out. Hmm. In which case, that would also help us. Hmm. Kylie, what's your hand up? Uh, you said that there was like an orc in front of me. Oh no, Leontari was behind you, the big orc. Our orc. Freeze. A little bit of. Yeah, okay, so I was oh, like, I was like, oh no, is there another orc in front of me? Did he just hear this whole plan? I just wanted to clarify. No, 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 totally, totally all right. No, no okay. other orc. You guys are, you guys are like three hundred feet above this, this war rally. So everyone's, everyone's far away. That's why there's like no one here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. We're, we're in the nosebleed section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we couldn't afford the good Keep tickets. Seats. 
cheap seats. So, uh, yeah. the yes. rock slide, the rock slide uh, would be from the charges we set up previously, right? That would be the rock out of character. Sorry, the charges you put up were at the entrance to the quarry yeah. around the cave entrance. These would be deep within the actual uh, quarry itself. And also, I want to clarify. So, we do have backup with uh, the dogs and Ufgard behind us. You have an ambush. That's a healthy okay. run away from this location. That's correct. Okay. Now, well, I say we set off the ones inside. If anybody makes it out the entrance, then we blow that one. And then whoever comes out after that, we hightail out here until we meet the dogs in the Wolf Guard Company. That um, sounds like a great plan. I right, would like to be out of the range of any sort of explosion, preferably. Bubble Boil says, One rule, I have to watch the boom go splody pop. Yeah, but After. only you. Like, we can leave. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can do that. Just that's you fine. That's, that's fine. Not good, sure. But... <laughs> Meeson have to stay watch. Make sure to go. This for goblin science. For goblin science. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, you want to sure. see your spirit. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Marinle is also like, of course, for goblin science. Yeah. Um, all right. So with that, Marinle is going to take the second trigger, where the, the charge of the uh, trigger. And she takes this plunger, and then her smile grows super wide, big. And I'm out. I'm gone. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> All right. Everyone's <laughs> running out. Then you hear this. It's a split second pause, and then all of a sudden, the loudest series of explosion chains go off, and they echo in the quarry, loud and horrible. Uh, you hear screams, anger, like roaring and goblin work. And then all of a sudden, as you know what, give me a reflex save, everyone, as you're running. You're Again? Brains <laughs> it out. I, I, I already started, so... Ah. Oh, yeah. I... Oh, no! You have a hero point. Uh... I, I yeah. would like to use one of my hero points. Go right ahead. <laughs> I better. It was good, but not that good. That's so much worse. Oh my god. All right. Well. What's the DC? I'll tell you oh after no. I hear the numbers. Cool. Dang it. My number went down. <laughs> Yikes. You can still. <laughs> No, I think you have to use the second one anyway. Yeah, uh, I have to use the second. <laughs> so, Sydney, what was your reflex save? 16. Casey, what was your reflex save? Went from a 15 to an 11. Oh. Ooh, but oh. I started, I said I started running, so yeah. I hope that helps. I'll put a little number in my head to bonus that because you have a good lead, so I'll keep that in my mind. Woodward, what was your reflex save? Uh, I got a 15, and Mush got a 24. <laughs> of course! Oh, it's Mush! <laughs> Mush is like a pro. Uh, I back to grab Mush and Mush Mush out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Powell, what was that reflex save? Uh, originally, it was a crit fail. It was a one. <laughs> I am glad with the second roll. I got, with my modifiers, a 24. Very nice. Kylie, please give me the good or bad news. 14. Okay. Okay. So the DC to beat for this little fun trip through uh, uh, Action Hero Alley was a 12. Now, Casey, because you had a head start, I gave you a plus one. Great. Which means, so suddenly with the explosion, you hear the horrible avalanche of loose rock and earth colliding down to the quarry. Suddenly, you see this gigantic uh, uh, kind of backlash of explosion, debris, and smoke start pouring into the main workstation you guys are in, and you are running as this uh, uh, complete collapse of not only the quarry, but part of the workstation just starts running after you. And finally, you break, you see a light of day through the other end of the entrance of the quarry. You jump out in time to have this and close up to the front. You're all like laying on your face. As you do, you just hear this voice go, 
Second trigger! Poof! <laughs> and suddenly you hear another series of pop, 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 as now this entirely caved in front just gets annihilated in the bombs that you placed. Um, as this happens, it's like dead quiet. The birds aren't chirping, the animals aren't skittering, the wind seems to be dead silent as the bombs have gone off in massive force. And there, with a gigantic grin on their faces, eyes obscured by their own ingenuity and the light gleaming off their goggles, is Marinle and Ka Bubble Boil staring and going, For science. We wanted you to wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then Marinle just goes, Marinle says, Upon further analysis, waiting was not necessary. We had to blow up second boomstick. <clears throat> Sorry, we had to blow up the other location. Can't wait to tell Cobble. We wanted though. to wait on the first boom. <laughs> and then she goes, Oh, well then we need to work out a system because how was I supposed to know? That is an unknown unknown and I cannot qualify work with things that I do not know that I do not know. Hey, it's the day I'm gonna murder a child. <laughs> um, Cobb Bubble Boil kind of has this moment of this look of realization as as their mouth kind of goes with a tiny little dot, and their eyes kind of go wide and go, "Oh, missing forgetting fart thought." Um, there was a place so that Zanakin could escape quickly it's down the way it it long far double wide down down but it's there also i would not be surprised shock at thought finding to see the ones writing angry double big birds made it out okay at least one well at the very least are our, our limbs are still attached? And, and 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 you see Bubble Boil getting very excited and massive collateral damage. Yeah, you know Cobbledale's main source of income. We did just destroy, but now, I'm sure on. they'll be fine. Hold on, in a quarry, you gotta blow the walls apart to get the smaller rocks, right? So we may have done him a favor. True. We'll see. We did you the said job for a them. Yeah. I mean, perhaps yeah. we could ask for a reward maybe next time we get back to town. <laughs> I think we need to focus on the bigger picture here. Where was that tunnel? Do you know where that tunnel ends? You see this goblin, like her fingers are just kind of dancing, like she's like following strings and she's doing and she's tying knots and she's like. She turns around and then she walks like maybe about 15 feet to that giant chasm you threw that bomb earlier. And she goes, Thereson, Thereson, right Thereson, right Thereson. <laughs> we have bombs there though. You have one bomb and it, it already blew up. It already blew up. I thought we had a. Uh, no, I, I, I threw it. But what about Rufus bomb? Oh, those haven't gone off yet. Nope, that was the second one. The one oh, placed around the ridge. Boom. That was the second boom. Remember. The one that connect them so they connected and that was the second one. Yeah. But Two there triggers. Is a chance that maybe the the bomb happened to depending on the size of the explosion, maybe could have blocked an exit. How quickly does it look like we could get down there? Pretty far drop, I'd say it's a little farther than how far down the quarry was, so I mean Okay, I'll rephrase it. How fast could Shonabis get down there? No, I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just thinking that. I was like, okay, but how fast can I get down there? <laughs> so, so we've, we've noticed her record is one turn, so six seconds to get to the Great, bottom. okay. So we really had to get down there. <laughs> yeah, I'll so say this. We don't have a way to get down there and, like, head him off, maybe. Yeah. I'm off the pass. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually, you know, I'll tell you what, Classic. give me a survival check to figure out the kind of the lay of the land and how you could do, uh, head him off the pass. 
all of us or just Ian? Anyone who wants to, but Ian obviously gets first dibs on that. Yeah, everybody can try it. Please try it. Um, I'm actually going to use my hero point. That's... All right. Question. Um, yes, uh, Kylie. Can, can we see those redstone tribes flying around? The red rock red flyers or battle flyers? Yeah. Uh, give, once you're done with your survival check, give me a perception check for that. Nope. That, I just, no survival for me today. <laughs> I was 19. Oh. No, but all that amazing, awesome intel gathering earlier, though. Okay. Uh, what was that, Michael? I got 19. All right, 19. Uh, what was your number E? Uh, for survival? Yeah. Great. It was seven, or 16, excuse me. 16. Okay. Sydney? I got a 14. All right. Kylie, what was that survival check? 14. All right. So, let me go back to my just really artistically well-drawn map you guys i think i think i may be in the wrong business i think it should be map maker so here is your headquarters this is the quarry you're at the ambush is here you guys find out that the kind of head off of the pass is right here. hold on my fingers aren't doing one second Okay, so X marks the spot. This is a head him off at the pass. Mm. Now, granted, they're going to be going around the quarter and up, up the hill uh, about a you know a couple hundred feet. However, this is where they would probably be coming out from near the ambush and stuff. I mean, that's better off for us. Yeah, I had an idea. Mm. Uh, hold on to that really fast, because Kaylee, you also... Sorry, Kylie. Ugh, so sorry. You owe me a perception check. Yes. Uh, that is be... 25. You see obscured by the light of the afternoon that there is definitely a body, a... a... form hovering in the sky. Far above you. And it's just this massive creature, and it's powerfully undulating as if flapping its wings to stay up, and some other awkward shape uh, on on the top, just kind of looking around, and it's just awkwardly, its shoulders are, are moving side to side. So you can tell, it looks like there's at least one survivor from the Red Rock Battle think, Flyers. And he can't see us? Not right now. At least he's not looking for you. Shona gets a little, a quick little elbow. Gets her right in the knee. Yeah, just a little quick little like <laughs> nudge, like, hey. <laughs> it wasn't what I thought, but I told you they could fly. <laughs> it points to the orc. <laughs> Flying orcs. Um, uh, I mean Technically, technically, and that's the best kind of right. <laughs> You're technically I told right. you they could. Um so uh Sydney, did you have your hand raised earlier about a plan or something? I have an idea. Frank and Orc can throw trees. Duck hunt. Far. Duck hunt. <laughs> Duck hunt. Duck hunt. <laughs> After he throws it, he can be the dog too to go get it. Yeah. <laughs> and do that horrible laugh that he does. I got a question, uh, PJ. Mm-hmm. I know it's probably out of range for a sling, but would it be still in range for a Chonobus bow and arrow? Oh yeah, that thing's got like a like a hundred foot plus range. Yeah, that could probably hit the guy. But it's out Easily. of range for a sling though, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Um So yeah, what's the plan? My idea is to utilize our big orc friend, perhaps one of the last of his kind now. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Don't say it like that. Um, to yeet a gigantic tree at the burb. Okay. Uh, as you offer this idea, you realize there's a very large gap in the group. Someone's missing. They're not within this tableau. Where's my son? <laughs> Where is Eloise? He's there. Oh, that was a good call. 
I got really scared. Um, when did and why did she get off the bus? <laughs> <laughs> God, wait, wait. Are you saying that? Where's my son? <laughs> Where's my son? <laughs> Where's my boy? Timmy, my boy. Timmy. Shiona, just give me a perception. Abandon check. my child. Give me, <laughs> give me a perception check with minus four. If you have bonuses for hearing, you can add those. Do I have bonuses for hearing? I don't even know. Some elf abilities do give bonuses to hearing on perception checks. Oh. Ooh. How far are we? We how far are we away from his last known existence? I will tell we you that after this roll. <laughs> I don't want to I also want to know how we lose a giant 12 foot org. <laughs> yeah. If you can. Okay. Wait. I, I knew I should have put him on a leash. <laughs> but the papoose. That's a 15. Okay. And that's with the minus four? Yeah. Okay. You hear through what you can only describe as maybe multiple feet of solid rubble you hear this voice kind of echoing from inside the quarry <sighs> and not echoing I'm sorry just kind of breaking through and the voice says you not leave entirely confused commanding officer please give targets you not leave is confused and lost please commanding officer give targets and it's just barely breaking through the rock uh Sweet. Uh, I got a 22 for a perception check, and Woodwort is a sensate gnome, which means he has imprecise scent for 30 feet. Mm -hmm. So if we get anywhere near wherever he is, I think he, Woodwort and Mush, are going to be a la rescue dogs in the avalanche, <laughs> like trying to get through things and figure out where he went. All right, so you can Sniffing tell... Her. Sniff him from, you can tell he's on the other side of the debris wall that popped from when you guys left and it caved in. He's on the other side of that big wall and he's still inside the quarry headquarters. Probably maybe just a few feet on the other end of all that rubble. We're digging. I was going to say, wait, he's a big boy, so would, would we be able to like maybe call him and he can like Kool-Aid man his way out? Like, oh yeah! Uh, I, I like can it. try. <laughs> Ian's like, yes! Yeah, great. Give me... Because I got a nasty plan for this. Give me a... What's diplomacy. Up, Give me What's a diplomacy up? check. Yeah. No, let's not do it anymore. Why would, why would we do that after you said that? <laughs> Abort mission. Well, yeah, mission. Yeah. So uh, we're not... Diplomacy. No, no, we got to try to get him out. Yeah. All right, so diplomacy check. Uh, only from the commanding officer, which is Shionibus. We aid her. Uh, I don't want to use this. Guidance her. Anymore. Aid and guidance. Please. Okay. <laughs> it hasn't been good to I don't know us. how we can aid in something that we have. Like, none of us know Orchid. Words of encouragement. Don't fail me now. That could be aid. Aid could be words of encouragement. That's a nat 20. <gasps> oh. Never mind. So, uh, Kylie. Not today, them, Satan. <laughs> I, need you, I need you to give an order to Unit Leontari. Kool Aid Man. Be specific. <laughs> uh, mm. Is this all in Orcish? This is all an orchestra, right? Mm hmm All right. Um, the Antari, follow my voice and come here now. Like, stern, angry mom. Like, she lost her child in a department store, and now she's, like, pissed. <laughs> you hear uh, Leontari's voice get infinitely louder as he suddenly shouts, New unit designation, Leon Tari, cannot identify location of commanding officer. Repeat, Leon Tari needs 
target. And then you hear this other voice, and it says, New unit designation Lova found target unit Leon Tari. We can't even watch them fight! No! <laughs> <laughs> So, you hear again the voice repeats, and it says, Repeating, New Unit's designation Leon Tarri, asking commanding officer for targets. Man, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can say that again. This, is, this isn't okay. This isn't fun anymore. <laughs> um... I kind of have an idea that I'd like to try. I'll bring it with the group, though. Yeah, let's hold. Let's hold on. To, oh yeah, you want to bring up the group? Yeah, go right ahead. Um, what do you guys think about? We have the the little girl and the goblin alchemist. Maybe carefully set small charges on the wall to create a like a hole. That it's definitely awesome. not going to be any worse than what he's already gone through. Yeah. <laughs> right, I was like, is that going to blow him up more though? Marindale looks at you and she says, ah, not entirely. Explosions work in over different ways. You have a crack, a pop, a shatter, and a spread. And there's many, many more. Goblin science has showed me the way of the boom. But technically speaking, we can do a shattering explosion to get rid of the debris. It's not that hard. Ha ha ha. A control would it be? Bubble Boil kind of goes, You look for control making in Goblin Science? No. Meeks and Dunn's here. No. And she storms off. <laughs> but Marin lays like, I... As controlled as I can make it? If this goes wrong. I mean, it's, it's an option. It's an option, guys. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. But let's hide behind a rock or something. Uh, I was thinking uh, because... Can I do a deception? Can you say that again? Do the signal. Can I do a deception? Oh, sure. What, what, do you, what do you want to do with your deception? Um, okay. So she is going to stand uh, to like the now, I guess, covered doorway of rock and try to convince this other unit that she is General Corcos? Sure. Okay. Uh, no. She's looking to adopt. Give me a <laughs> deception check. While you're doing that, Maurinle has already rolled her alchemy check for making a bomb. So, please, give me that deception check. Powerful um, single bomb vibe. Real quick. Another uh, someone cast guidance on her? Me! <laughs> okay. It's a plus one. And also, can I roll a nature to see if... Because I saw this on a nature channel before. No. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, uh, create a... Uh, where to put the explosives for... That looks structurally sound. I'm going to say, with what I rolled, you're you're okay trusting Marinle. Okay. Uh, so, Kylie, what was that roll? That's a dirty 20. Nice. All right, all right, all right, all right. One second here. Okay. Confirm that with the stats in the book. Mm. So, you see um, Marinle reach into her um, apron, pulls out this like makeshift rack of chemicals and a little Bunsen burner and all these little scientific things. She just squats down right where she is and she just starts mixing things like crazy. Even if you're like taking a few weird chemicals, licking them, go more. Ew, less, ew. And she's just going to town with these chemicals. While she's doing that, what are you saying with that dirty 20 uh, deception to unit Leo, uh, Lova? Oh. So, whole, like, personality change. This is, like, passion oh. abyss doing her diplomacy stuff. I'm not going to give away because spoilers. But, mm -hmm. uh, in Orcus, and, like, the, the most, like, I, I am top dog, 
kind of voice you can muster and say, I am General Korkos. You will... Um, you are part of my unit now. You shall follow by my orders. Now, do I have to repeat myself? So as you say that, you see Marinle working feverishly, almost like it's just, she's like getting in a full sweat. She finally has in her hands like six uh, explosive chemicals and vials, and she starts shoving them in special places. She's like, nope, nope, mm hmm, mm hmm, yep, 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 yep. And when she's done, she's like, mm hmm, yep, 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 and explode! And she hits this button, and suddenly she just pop, 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 the series. This kind of patchwork of explosion stands across the rock, and you hear the rushing of rubble. And suddenly, as the rubble uh, just completely disintegrates and rolls away, you see two of these Leotari like uh, choking each other and about to throw blows on each other's face, like just about to knock each other in the jaw. And then you say that thing about like, "I am General Korokos. I'm your commanding officer. You're my unit now." And the other unit looks, looks you up and down and drops and says, no unit Lova, we're requesting order some commanding officer. And Leontari kind of like steps beside him, no units, Leontari and Lova are now requesting targets. You got twins. Power of cosplay. Oh shit, I was back <laughs> over a picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I will say they do look identical. They, they have, it's not even just the same size and shape, facial features, muscular, musculature, body posture. It is identical. Um, yeah. Have one You're throw the other clones. one at the bird. Uh, one second. What was that, Ian? Have one throw the other one at the bird. Oh! Yeah. It'd be cool. Like baseball. It'd Only the cool. commanding officer can Fastball give the command. Special. Fastball special. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Only the commanding officer can give the command. Except it's a fastball special with two colossus. <laughs> can we dress one of them up as a giant monkey and the other one as a giant lizard first? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were gonna fight, but then you had to save them. Ugh. Right? Yeah, the worst. My bad, guys. I feel I feel so bad. Casey was like, I was gonna get a kaiju battle. Oh! That was yeah, but then he's like, then... Wait, where is it? Then our giant orc went... Into the cave, and so I was like, "All right, we gotta get him back." <laughs> they can play fight later, kids. Yeah, uh, that's a good boy. <laughs> I imagine they're like, like you know, we were saying like golden retrievers earlier, but now I just think of them as like two sweet little pitties, little pit bulls, just like. Oh, sweet's the right oh. word. Well, they did like. Leontari did like crush morale, so. Because you told him to. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Tomato tomato. <laughs> you literally told him to. Anyway, uh so what do you do? The two units are literally just dead standing next to each other, having that kind of looking off into the distance, waiting for a target and a designation. We should just blow that piece of junk out of the sky. <laughs> to the to the red flyer? Yes. So they step out of the cave. They slowly look up and they say in one voice in Orcish, Target acquired. They both reach for giant chunks of debris. You see them kind of aiming and then they roll to hit. It's two stones, one bird this time. <laughs> God damn it, hero point. Uh, so. Um, let me just. <laughs> well, now you can you can make up for that. So here's the sweet the sweet thing. Um, they get a big old fat bonus to hitting stuff. Um, they both crit. <gasps> yes. <laughs> so you see ah, this you see face. this orc and he starts flying away and it looks like he's gonna get away. Like yeah. he is, he's starting to fade on the horizon, and you see them with their hands, like a shot put with his rock, and they're like lining it up, lining up, and they say designation, thought I get the quiet, and they just huck a boulder about bigger than all of you. It's maybe the size of um, maybe the size of their foot, 
throw this thing. You see off in the distance, this bird just woof, 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 and then these two rocks just pincer it in midair, and it goes, and it falls out of the sky, splashes under the, the deep out to sea near the horizon. So, like, I duck love hunt. these guys. Yeah, and, and once they're done, they kind of get back to their neutral, and they go, <laughs> new units, Leontari and Lova, were uh, requesting target. Did, did you say that they fell into the ocean? Yeah, they found they wow. fell out Darn. in the waters deep out to sea. Darn. I was hoping Shouldn't we head with these two yeah. guys after the other orcish? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that plan. I think we need to hit him from far away, though, with rocks to make sure he doesn't have a chance to try to convince them that he's more powerful. Oh. One will have rocks, the other will have trees. Yeah, there we go. Pretty picture in my head. Sticks and stones will bro- break this man's bones. <laughs> <laughs> What if we had a ranger on top of one of those things? Just sniping. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, wow. Sorry, my, my brain yeah. just gave me the dumbest play. So it's like it's you on this guy's shoulders and there's everyone else. What does your elven eye see? And you're just like, bitches. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's just acquired. Where <laughs> immediately the goblins are on the giant or- orgers. Oh my god! Like that. So I, I think yeah, I think uh, uh, Maetheus is, is suggesting that Chionibus get on the shoulders of one of the uh, the new units, either Lee and Tari. That's or just Casey being like, "Do you guys cool visual?" <laughs> <laughs> Shut is quick. Say something cool. Something cool. <laughs> Basically, though. <laughs> All right. So. The... Oh. oh no! Sorry, I was gonna say. So, what are you guys going to do? I was gonna say. Uh, so, who else has a? Uh, besides me, is a range fire could be a range fighter as well because we have two of them now. Technically, I have divine lance that reaches thirty feet. Okay. Everyone but me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got spells that go up to 120, I think. I've got some spells. I would say would work. He has range. Have him <laughs> on. I'd say would work because he's orc. so much for the rest. What was that, Kylie? I would say would work because he's so much smaller than the rest of us, so he can like keep up. Yeah, and he has a better range too than me. Yeah. Okay. Well, how far do your throwing daggers reach, Matheus? Uh, I think like 30 feet if I'm good. <laughs> if I'm good. <laughs> uh, all right. So the plan is just so I just so I know are you are you staying here and trying to attack down or are you leaving the quarry? What's your thought? Oh, attack down sounds a good sounds like a good idea. We and all just. <laughs> Range doesn't really mean much when you're attacking down, right? Because mm. you're going, all your ammo is just going downwards. It still, what? it still has some effect to it because if it's too far away, that's still a minus to hit. Wait, who's this guy we're attacking? What's his name again? Champion Zonikin. Wait, so we get to we get to yell out at this guy that we have the high ground Zanikin. <laughs> It's not a hero point. He's earned it. You got a hero point. Okay. And no, one you. hero point is not enough. Let's <laughs> get another. Get him off, Okay, great. Let's grab these guys, and we got to do this now. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if, uh, only only if you deliver the line, I will accept nothing else. Oh, Woodwork can do it. I got no problem with it. Woodward must. <laughs> so, Woodward is going on one of the new units. Shionibus is going on the other. And you are attacking from your position. Champion Zanakin down below. Correct? All right. I believe so. Um, yeah, any other possible plan we had just got scrapped. <laughs> <laughs> I get, to, I get to see it now, like, hello there! What? <laughs> I have the high ground! Anyway, so, uh, what I want, because you now have to locate Xanakin, I need you guys to give me a perception check. Uh, oh, and then, uh, no, just just the, the two on the on the units, and then I'm oh. going to need you two 
well, at least one of you, to figure out how you're going to give orders in Orcish. Oh. So, what was that perception check, Ian? I have a 19. Nice. And Kylie? That's a 14. Ooh. You, you're so fixated on that one bird rider that you just mm, T-boned that guy. It was really good. You don't see Zanakin. Uh, Ian, you see what looks like a small surviving contingency kind of file out from this unusual cavern at the bottom of this of this big uh, uh, cavern, chasm. Chasm, there you go. Uh, and you see, like, it's one really big buff orc wearing the black cape and all the animal hides and trophies on his body, and he's got his giant black spear. He looks pissed. And you see uh, two other orcs who look mangled, but they're, like, still kind of shaking up and getting loose. They are very far away away. You're going to be at a lot of negatives to try and hit them, but you can still try to hit them. As they stop, they kind of... <sighs> and look up, and they see, and you can tell you're made. They see you because you're on these two 12-foot monstrosities. So, Ian, you've seen these orcs. However, does Woodward speak orcish? He does not. Okay. He so, can't you? What are you gonna do? Um, he is going to. I think he's gonna try to catch their attention. Okay. Um, in because they know we're here, I'm hoping that'll either make them try to attack or stop in place. Um, and Woodward shoots, produce flames straight up into the air. Mm-hmm. And he yells, <laughs> "We have the high ground, Zanakin." I'm just seeing Woodward right now. Give me all your good feelings and spirit, spirit bomb. <laughs> you were my brother, Zanakin. I loved you. <laughs> you were my brother, Zanakin. I loved you. <laughs> you were you, the same as not a stranger. You were the chosen one, Zanakin. So you say that you have the high ground. You're on these massive. You know, Leontari and Lova. And um, you see Zanakin stop. He's panting. He's thinking. He takes his giant spear, spearhead first, and throws it into the earth. He takes off his cloak, unfurls it to the floor, and drops to his knees. And he says in common... Parlay. What? <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. He's a pirate? <laughs> no, I saw this coming. <laughs> I pop it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you best not believe in orc stories, Miss Turner. <laughs> You're in one. I just leave. Shout. That would be the French. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Uh. Mentors of mayonnaise. Negotiation. <laughs> all right well so the question is do we want to start this conversation right now with cha- with champion zanakin as he is just giving himself up to you willingly or should we do that next time on edge of legend oh man yeah we're i think it's a great place to start yeah a great place to start awesome off. place to start <sighs> yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. So that's where we're going to be. That's where we're going to end it tonight with Champion Zanakin throwing up his arms in defeat and shouting for a peace negotiation. That being said, we're going to do our goodbyes because you guys have been tremendous. Uh, so uh, tell us your name, where we can find you online, and anything else you want to say. Starting with Sydney. Uh, me. Hi. My name is Sydney. Uh, I played Alona. Um, you can find me on social media at Sydney Rabino, which I think is down here somewhere. Um, and every Tuesday, except for this Tuesday, because I was dog sitting, I read fairy tales on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, it's on my page, Sydney Rubino. Yeah. All right. Ian. Hey, my name's Ian. I play Woodwar and Roll for Mush. And uh, you can find me at uh, Scoutmaster of the Troop. It's down on this side or here. Um, on Instagram, if you want to check anything out that I check anything that i do out all right next up mr kapow tell us about yourself 
Hello, hello. I am Michael Powell, aka Mr. Kapow. You can find me all over the interwebs on my social medias, which are Mr. Kapow. It's M R K A P A O, or my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Michael Powell Does Stuff, because I do a lot of stuff. Tomorrow, I will be one of the co hosts on Toys Little Live. We talk about toys and nostalgia. This is Comic Con week. And on Saturday, I will be doing a interview with Jesse Flowers, the voice actress for TOF from uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah, that sounds super, super awesome. Kylie, tell us about yourself. I am Kylie. I played Shionibus, this wonderful game. Uh, you can find me at Kai's Wonderful Life. I think it's right here, maybe. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I got a couple of cool stuff coming out soon. Um, stay tuned. But yeah, you can find me all over the interweb. Very nice. Casey, please tell us about yourself. I am Casey. I am Case Crusader on the on all the things. It's right there, er, there, there. Okay, <laughs> found it. Uh, I am Case Crusader on all the things on the internet. Uh, Amy, who was not able to be with us tonight, is A Marie by the Sea on all the things. And we have our podcast together called Talk Nerdy to Me, Baby. We're just gonna be coming back at you full force, heavy hitting hard with uh, August next month so we'll, we'll be back in that full swing plus some other stuff coming up but uh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely go out and uh definitely check out the the talk to me baby podcast uh so yeah we'll probably have amy here next week uh my name is pj mcgall i'm everywhere as pj dot mcgall i'm not even talking about twitter because you know i don't go there uh this has been a little awesome pride and joy we're glad that you liked episode seven uh hopefully we'll see you here same edge of legend time uh for episode eight and watch us and become heroes with us uh legends dare i say thank you so much have a great night bye friends thank you cuber calamity for being the most amazing mod ever and and peggy chan i'm sorry your back itched (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Woodward, you're Hooch Spice. Yeah, I heard I was Hooch Spice. I did like that. Oh my God. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Eloise is Scary Spice, which really makes more sense. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> Maybe more like Spoopy Spice. Spoopy Spice! I like that. I like exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. Yay. Good night, guys. Bye-bye.